Budweiser Gardens in London. It's the Niagara River Lions and the London Lightning right here. So who will taste the redemption tonight? Because those two teams are tied at two wins and two losses apiece. Let's see who will break that streak tonight. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, worshipers of the Orange Spear. This is Aaron Sanders with JP Justin Prince. And let's just go right out of the line and talk about how these two teams have been doing. First off, let's talk about Niagara. Their win against the Windsor Express, 94-86 Monday night. Yes, they have a, that was their second win of the season for Niagara right there, of course. And they played pretty well that night, of course, as well. Which struggled for much of that night, shooting-wise, it seemed once again. But with Niagara, it was kind of a bounce back with how they started off their season so far. Where it was a, where in most first quarters, they've completely struggled, mm -hmm. it seems, with scoring. They're being outscored big time in the first quarter so far overall this season. But they, of course, outscored Windsor in that game as well. But there were also times when they struggled offensively, like in the second quarter, in the second half of it, they struggled for much of that quarter. Exactly. And at the end of the day, it was former Windsor Express players, Kirk William Jr. and Chris Commons, providing the work to give Niagara that win. Quickly go over the Lightning. They played in Orangeville yesterday. They lost a tough one, 121-113. Let's quickly talk about that one. Yeah, well, right now, I can already say I spoke with Coach Kyle Julius about that matchup, and he was not happy with how they performed. In fact, he said they did not follow their game plan like they wanted to for the most part, if at all, and they're looking to make those adjustments tonight. As for the game itself, of course, you got Julian Boyd and Royce White going, but it was still the A's who came up on top in what was basically a close game at the finish. Well, this game could have gone no overtime. They had Royce White to the line so many times in the final moments, but they were unable to connect on those free throws. Henceforth, they lost by eight. Now they're looking mm -hmm. for redemption tonight. Quickly, speaking about that, we have a season series right now that's tied at one win apiece. London lost the heartbreaker on Boxing Day right here against the River Lions. And then the Lightning gave them gave themselves justice. They redeemed themselves at Meridian Center, winning at 134-106 against the River Lions. You've got to break that tie tonight because the Lightning are in store for a three-game series, which we'll talk later tonight. Let's go to the keys of the game for tonight. London. With the keys game to the London, they have to execute their game plan the way they're supposed to. they got to produce an offense, and they have to make sure Niagara is held in check. Right now, they also have to make sure they pull away in that first quarter because, as said, they have struggled so far, Niagara, in the first quarter in the season. It's about a 40-point advantage right now for opponents compared to Niagara in those first quarters so far. Uh, otherwise, if you're London, you got to limit Niagara's transition. Now, with the one-two punch of Siglinski to Logan Stutz, that's one thing, but there's possibly a chance of a scratch in Niagara's lineup tonight that could factor those transition games, JP. Yes, sir. With Stanley Siglinski, he is going to be out tonight with a wrist injury. Speaking with Matty Latour before the game and confirming it with the scores table. So he is scratched for tonight. Also on the IR now is Mike Allison. In the game, in for tonight is Watomi Ovastola. I apologize for mispronouncing that last name, Junior, as he'll be put in for his third game of the season, coming in for IR relief there. And we'll see what else happens tonight as well. Supposed to be returning tonight as well is Richard Armani. But fans are saying he was seen in street calls tonight. But we'll see once the game officially starts. You don't want to speculate with something like that, that's for sure. So a few scratches tonight for Niagara coming into tonight. Absolutely, and we don't want to be above spreading misinformation, that's for certain. Niagara is just two things, short and simple. They got to deny the entry inside. London's the leading scorer. In the, in the whole league, number one in the league, and most of their points came from inside the paint, and especially why not when you have Julian Boyd and Royce White providing all the damage. If they limit them to shooting from the mid-range and three-point zone, they're going to be in fair share tonight. And of course, too, you got to seek the ball pressure when the time has come. Yes, exactly. I agree with you with, with Royce White and Julian Boyd. You have to keep them outside of that paint, and you have to make them shoot those jump shots. And when you make them shoot the jump shots, make sure Julian Boyd doesn't make those three-point shots as well. No, but wh when it comes to the points as well with with Niagara as well, in my opinion right now coming into tonight, I feel they need to score in that first quarter. They cannot afford to struggle here. They got to make sure they execute on their plays and keep the tempo where they need it to be. They don't want London to abuse that tempo like they're known for doing under Julius' system. Exactly. 
And for this, the Lightning versus the River Lions, let me just point out one thing. If you, if you don't think that Lightning strikes, well, you might as well Lion. <laughs> Okay, game starting right here. Lightning and River Lions will have the national anthem. And then after that, we'll have the PA introductions. Mike DeLuhi will do the player introductions. And then we'll go over upstairs to the media booth. John and Chris Croucher on the call. We'll see you at the Noxham halftime. But we'll have the national anthem, which is moments away. Stay tuned.
And welcome, sports fans, to another night of London Lightning basketball here at the beautiful Budweiser Gardens in London, Ontario. London Lightning versus the Niagara River Lions. My name's Jonathan Howling, and I'll be calling the play-by-play. -play. And my fellow commentator is Chris Croucher. Welcome, Chris. Glad to be here, John. Thanks for, uh, of course, giving us that great intro, and I think we've got ourselves a special game here tonight. And why are you thinking that, Chris? Well, just looking at these two teams, of course, we know they've got a bit of a rivalry. Of course, London was pretty key in uh, the development of the Niagara River Lions and getting that expansion team off the ground. So naturally, there's almost sort of a little brother, big brother aspect going here. And uh, the Niagara River Lions, of course, really added some key pieces and guys like Chris Commons and also getting the return of guys like Sammy Zaglinski and, of course, the league MVP last season, Logan Stutz. So uh, it, it'll be an interesting game because London's going to have to respond to that kind of firepower. Yes, this is their third meeting of the year, and they have split the first two games. It was a tight game here in the home opener with the London Lightning last week, and Niagara winning near the buzzer by one point, and then London went down to Niagara and blew them out by almost 27 points. And here is their rematch. Now, London last played last night, so this is a back-to-back -back, uh, night game for them. They lost to the Orangeville A's last night and we're going to be doing opening lineup shortly so and the niagara river lions won their last game over windsor and one of the key players in that game was as you had said chris commons a former windsor player and niagara ended up beating windsor both teams are two and two to start the season you know that windsor game it wasn't exactly a pretty one to watch uh, I think it was uh, a bit of a, I'm trying to think of a nice way to put it, it was an ugly basketball game, and uh, the Niagara River Lions, uh, they're playing a, a team with the Windsor Express, Coach Bill Jones knows what late plays he wants to call, uh, he knows how to win ugly, he's done it before, he's done it many times with the Windsor Express, and uh, I think it was a really big deal that Niagara, in a game that wasn't pretty, were able to just really gut it out and get that victory uh, against a two-time champion. Yes, well, we know Windsor had a complete uh, roster overhaul this year, and so they're still struggling to find some chemistry on the team and find their legs, but all credit to Niagara River Lions winning their second game of the year and playing 500 ball as well as the London Lightning. Just waiting for the opening introductions for the players for each team. And as it's getting announced, I'll make sure I say it as well, because... This is a great arena. It's lots of noise. Great sound system. Looking around tonight, there are some fans in the stands, even though it is hockey night in Canada, if you want to say, and in the U.S. Big match tonight between Canada, U.S., and the World Juniors. So I'm sure a lot of people are at home staying there tonight. But having a look around the crowd here, still a decent turnout. I'm going to say maybe four to 500 tonight. I'd what probably you, give it a little bit more than a that. A little bit more? Well, maybe I should look over the railing here a little more. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, okay, let's go to six or 700. What about that? Which is, you know, a far cry from the usual crowds that are out here, usually in the mid 2000s, sometimes 3000s that we've had already at the London Lightning and the Budweiser Gardens. So London starting lineup, Junior Cadogan. Ryan Anderson out of Nebraska, a six foot four. And the glue guy, returning player for London Lightning, Garrett Williamson. I would say he's a de facto captain of the team. Royce White, the big pickup this year. I'm talking figuratively and literally. Former first round draft pick in the NBA. And six foot seven from Long Island, Julian Boyd. The starting lineup for Niagara is Bill L. Ben out of Niagara. Marcus Lucas, six foot six out of Eastern Kentucky. 
Josiah Moore from Tennessee Tech, 6'6". Six, six. The aforementioned Chris Commons, 6'9", from South Carolina Aiken. And Kirk Williams, Jr., 6'7", out of Bridgeport. Looking at these two starting lineups, there might be two players Niagara fans are a little surprised to see. Uh, Sammy Zaglinski, uh, we believe, is out with a wrist injury. Uh, and then, of course, you've got Logan Stutz, who's been feeling under the weather. Uh, we he is dressed. Uh, he's just not going to be getting the start. I believe they're probably going to limit his minutes uh, with the flu. He, and missed then, the, he missed the last game, didn't he, for the flu, I believe. Didn't, I believe didn't, so. Did not play, I believe. Yeah, and then... Uh, and then, of course, you've got uh, just off the injured reserve, but we didn't see him dressed, was Richard Amarty. Right. So uh, Richard Amarty likely out again for Niagara. London just played last night, but the injuries really uh, kind of put it back even with uh, Niagara having a couple key players out. Yes, so Niagara playing shorthanded tonight, and some people under the weather. Gluten, Chris Commons, and Logan Stutz. Just about ready for the opening tip-off. In the fifth game of the year for each team. We're early into the season. We just started right after Christmas on Boxing Day for the season this year. And now the games are coming fast and furious. Opening tip off right straight away to the hoop. Off the tip off right away was Royce White. Calling for a foul. It looked like he got hammered. I think they caught Windsor flat-footed on that tip-off. Well, Royce White only took him seven seconds to get his first points of this game. Yes, he played really well last game in the first half. It was a big difference maker. Good facilitator. This is Niagara with the ball. Ben, Bilal Ben as the point guard. That's Chris Commons up top. And that was Ben knocking it, drilling it off his foot out of bounds. Now we're talking about both teams. You know, we got some kind of a history now, four games into the season, and some some things that each team gonna have a quick look at. And we do know that there's lots of offense can be had tonight, because both of these teams are at the bottom of the league defensively in points allowed. Number nine and number ten. Long shot by Anderson. Big rebound off the backboard. Gonna be a held ball, I believe. Junior Cadugan putting his nose in there for that rebound. So defense has been an issue, we know, for both teams. We have seen spurts of good defense from London and was here at the home games that we've watched. They did hold um, Windsor to, I think it was 37 or 39 points in the first half of that game, but in the second half, Windsor made a big run to make the game a lot closer than it should have been. Yeah, London's been coming out flying in these games. Uh, they're outscoring opponents 125 to 90 in the first quarter, but it's really been the fourth quarter that's been their kryptonite this year. That was Kirk Williams Jr. missing Shot from the outside, Royce Williams, they pounded inside. Ball gets knocked out by Commons. Commons and White, that'll be a great combination to watch tonight if you're looking underneath the basket to see how they match up against each other. Commons is fifth year in the league, terrific player. Lots of history, great defense. That's the guy who made the year-end all-star team for NBL Canada four, in each of his first four years with this league. Uh, two second teams, two third teams. So you know you're getting a, or a heck of a player there. Uh, when Chris Commons takes the court. A step under and a little floater just at the buzzer. A beautiful move, unable to put it in, was Ryan Anderson. And again, this is Ben up top with the ball, directing traffic. Lewis, Marcus Lewis with the ball up top, throws it out to Commons on the, around the side. Josiah Moore, one of the starters as well, with the ball up tops. So nothing happening so far for Niagara. Long shot, big rebound by Josiah Moore. Puts it off, off the backboard. No box out that time, off that long rebound. Ball inside to White again. Nice pass underneath. Beautiful little backhand flip by Garrett Williamson. Nice one-two play. And that's where Williamson's most dangerous, on those cuts to the rim. He has such a soft touch. And he really understands where the basket is, no matter how much he crashes and bangs and gets flung around. He always seems to know where the basket is in proximity to him. That was Lewis going for the long point. Three-pointer, and Commons had gotten the inside position, and he was held down on the floor by London Lightning. Another thing we'd like to introduce early in the program is that if we look at fouls per game, we, we've noticed here our last couple of telecasts that there have been a lot of fouls. And then we look on the stats, and... Okay, London 
commits the most fouls in the whole league so far in the first four games. Well, I think they might have committed enough fouls uh, for the whole league with their 70 fouls uh, in that game between them and the Orangeville A's. And, you know, that's one of those ones where it kind of hurts as a fan, too, just because it stops the play so much. Now, they are deep, of course. They play all their players running, so they can't afford people to be in foul trouble. But that was Ben catching the ball. The nice uh, pass come from the inside, but he stepped on the end of the line when he went to set up for his shot. And there we see again that uh, that, outs, that out of bounds line in the corner for the, those threes. I have to think it must be smaller than any other court here because that seems to just grab guys by the heels every game that we see here. You see it in the NBA quite often as well in the deep corners there, people stepping on the end line when they're setting up for the shot. This is Julian Boy who played terrific last game. Junior Cadugan, long three-point shot. Royce White setting a big screen for him. He just had a wide open shot, nobody guarding him. That's Joel Friesen with an early start in for London. Some help defense, but a little too late. And that was Kirk Williams Jr. putting the ball in the net. Junior Cadugan being guarded by Ben, Bill Al Ben. Cadugan, he likes going to the hoop. Great inside pass. What a soft touch by Royce White. Unable to convert was Julian Boyd. Just a gimme for him again, set up by White. Long. Dribble drive and dish. And the penetration on another three missed by Nagar. They got a, they're getting their shot, taking the shots whenever they can get them. A little scramble for the ball. Ball getting moved around. Junior Cadugan was wide open, didn't take the shot. Again in the corner, this is Julian Boyd. And Williamson, the steady factor with eight seconds left in the shot clock. Royce White, beautiful soft pass. A great cut by Julian Boyd to cut in the lane. The pass was laid on a line, soft pass, easy to catch. The chemistry between those two has been outstanding at the start of this year. And of course, it's no coincidence that London has had those two as their leading scorers in the majority of their games. Yeah, they really played well that first half against Windsor. We could really see it. Three-pointer by Chris Commons. He can make those shots if he's left wide open. 9-7 for London Lightning. A little over four minutes played in the first quarter. Cadugan gets tied, double team and all tied up. Call for a jump ball. I believe that's going to be London's possession. But Cadugan dribbled right into a double team was unable to get the ball out quickly. White, White taking the ball out of bounds. Cadugan, Cadugan up top. Bilal Ben, if you're starting to recognize the players' names and, and numbers. Is White up top. Another quick pass to Julian Boyd. That was a set play. We can see that from way up here in the broadcast booth. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if every assist Royce White has had so far this season has been to Julian Boyd. Those two have been dynamic in the front court, and there hasn't really been a team that can answer to, to it. Pardon me. Josiah Moore with the ball. With, guarded tightly. Here is Commons again underneath with White trying to go behind the back. He's calling a holding foul. I just thought White was holding his ground there, but Called for, called for a holding foul against Chris Commons. Yeah, now we had talked a couple times this year, and for those fans who are just starting to learn about Royce White, he had, of course, led his team in a number of major categories, assist being one of them. Of course, who's the leading assist leader on the London Lightning? Royce White, the big guy. He's really got some passing ability that a lot of bigs at the NBLC level, you feed it into the post and it tends to stay there, but Royce White... Uh, just a very gifted passer out of the post. He's got an ability that not a lot of players in this league have shown. Good recovery by Lennon and Julian Boyd. Again, the recipient of some fortuitous scramble ball there. Junior Cadugan sets him up. And the Lightning got really out-rebounded uh, quite badly in that Orangeville game, so you know Coach Julius put an emphasis on that. And uh, so far, so good. Obviously, it's early, but they've already got... Uh, a nice rebound there from Boyd. Well, we know it's early in the season, and we know there's lots of turnover on most of the rosters, so chemistry is always an issue. I think for a coach's perspective, trying to figure out what everybody's strengths is and how they fit together on the team is probably the biggest challenge. Royce White again, putting inside to Boyd. And this is Garrett Williamson taking it to the hoop, draws the foul on Chris Commons. Now we know that Niagara has a bit of a short bench, and he's going to have to be careful, Commons, not to pick up any cheap fouls. I'm sure he's going to play three quarters of this game tonight. Stutz still on the bench. Logan Stutz, last year's leading scorer. 
And MVP, still under the weather, and he's sitting on the bench right now. I think you're right. They're going to conserve his, conserve his minutes, see how long it can go. No injuries to report that we know of on the London Lightning. Nobody under the weather. They've got 11 players dressed, so they have spot for one more person yet whenever they make that decision. Tonight, only 10 dressed for Niagara. Williamson makes both. 15-9, lightning over the river lines. Midway through the first quarter here. The Budweiser Gardens in London, Ontario. Hope you're enjoying the telecast. This comes up top. He's getting a lot of the ball tonight. It's a big push off by Marcus Lewis that time and goes up with his left hand, but unable to convert. That's Ben looking underneath. Kicks it out again for a three-pointer. The ball's not moving that quickly, and London's recovering. Well on defense. I don't know if that ball was in time, but that's a Julian Boyd rebound. Throws it up high into traffic. Williamson really had no chance of getting that, putting that one down. Nice bounce pass and a good finish. Strong finish by Josiah Moore. Well, that pass from Boyd has to frustrate Coach Julius. You didn't really need to put it up there. They had three on one. You end up putting it behind him and way high. Uh, not a very good pass, and Lightning just wasted possession. Like an illegal screen that time by Boyd. It was a set play to be swung around the corner by London. Foul on London. That's their third team foul. And as we have said, they do commit the most fouls in the league so far this year. Something that they probably will want to clean up. And part of that is also the way they play. They like to feed it inside. They have guys like Williamson who uh, tend to charge to the rim and can be susceptible to charging calls. And then, of course, with White and... Uh, Nick Evans having an altercation earlier in the year. That certainly doesn't help uh, a player's reputation with the refs. And uh, it, it's going to be something they have to work on is that discipline because they want to play inside. They want to be a tougher team than they had last year down low. But uh, it's going to be a work in progress to make sure they don't they, – they minimize the downside of having a team like that. Yes, the London Lightning did get to the final game seven last year against Halifax. Halifax ended up winning. London is a two-time champion, has his Windsor and Halifax last year. This is a sixth year for the league. The league seems to be growing. Some changes in franchises locations, but there are ten teams in the league. Two divisions of five. And I believe, as of this point, Halifax defending champ is also the only unbeaten team in the league so far this year. Yeah, they've been off to a blistering start right now. They're actually playing right now. They're tied in the third quarter with the Cape Breton Highlanders. So uh, an expansion team out east giving the Hurricanes some trouble right now. Did you say a Highlanders or Islanders? Highlanders. Yeah, Highlanders. That's what I thought it was. Yeah, that's, I like that name. You ever been to Cape Breton? I have not, no. Oh, beautiful place. What a drive. Go around there. Around the Cabot Trail. That's just, that's just a beautiful country, a part of Canada. I was talking to the commissioner, Dave McGlore, right? Magley. Magley. Sorry, I was trying to pronounce his last name. And just a brief conversation with him and uh, said, you know, thanks for doing the broadcast. And uh, I said, you know, what's uh, when are we going to start evolving into maybe doing some TV again like we've done the first couple of years? He says he doesn't think the league will be ready until they're really across Canada with some teams out west. And he says there are plans in the work. You know, it's, it might be a bit of a process. He says once, we, once we've got something nationwide, I think then we can talk to the television people and see if we can't make a deal that's worthwhile. But uh, currently you're listening to us on the webcast. Nice backdoor cut. Unable to hang on to that. Logan Stutz made that pass. I think he was unable to hang on to that, Patterson, because he was held by the London player. You know, taking a look at number 22, Tyshawn Patterson. He, of course, was a member of the London Lightning last year. So uh, he's had a little bit of, a, of revenge in his mind when he plays the London Lightning. Uh, he, he saw his role really fade at the end of last season. He started strong, but maybe because it was his first season as a pro and you just start to fade after the grind hits you. But uh, he, he, he ended up going to Niagara this offseason. I know they were very happy to have him. And he's been off to a great start. He's averaging 19 points per game already. He's getting wow. more minutes than I think he ever had in London. And uh, he's been... He's been that microwave player. He's a guy who gets hot quick. You just put him on the court, let him shoot his shots, and if he gets hot, he can really shoot your team into a game. Microwave, I love that expression. It's the second or third time you use it on our broadcast. You must like those Detroit Pistons. Vinny, microwave, Johnson, those old school fans. So 
Oh, timeout taken. The Lightning, 15-11. Still partway through the first quarter. And Logan Stutson has come into the game, as we saw earlier. We'll see how his stamina holds up tonight. He's a very deceptive player. Sort of gangly, tall, wearing the glasses. I think more out of habit now than necessity. But he just finds different ways to score, and he can shoot the three as well as he showed last time he was here. He does an excellent job under the rim, too. There's nowhere really you can leave him and not have to worry about him because he can shoot the ball, but he also has nice touch when he's under the cylinder. Nice reverse layup, unable to convert, was Tyshawn Patterson that time. He definitely broke down the defense and got to the rim. Boyd up top, swinging the ball to the left side of the court. This is freezing up top. Looks like a lot of swinging and screening going on at the top. This is Royce White. Doesn't take the three, even though he had it. He drives to the hoop, throws it up with his left hand. High off the backboard, a circus shot, and it goes in. Continuation, got bumped going to the hoop. Well, getting that and one play is huge, but Royce White, just the finesse around the rim, not often seen from a guy his size in the NBL. I think that's a really good word that you use there, finesse. He, he is a finesse player, you know, despite, you know, he plays the big position, he plays the center spot on this team, but he has a lot of finesse. Well, he's got the size of a guy who could play the power forward at the NBA level, but his hands and his skill set are like a point guard at times. That's Kirk Williams Jr. putting her down, the easy swing over for Niagara. Garrett Williamson bringing the ball up. Another versatile player for Lionel Lightning. Garrett Williamson, when there is no point guard on the floor, he is the man bringing the ball up, setting the offense. Dribble penetration, high floater by Tyler Johnson. A recent pickup by the Lionel Lightning with debut he scored 21 points in his opening debut game oh Kyle Johnson that's my mistake I had, re I had written it out and you're right thank you for correcting me there <laughs> I know I don't like to get the players names wrong but we're early in the season and I'm still learning I swing over to Friesen he can shoot the three as well, and he makes it. The left-hander from the corner. You know, Joel Friesen, a key pickup for this team. He gave London fits in the NBLC Finals as a member of the Halifax Hurricanes. So, of course, London had to bring him in. And that was Kirk Williams Jr. there with the nice little jumper. Yes, even though there is a lot of turnover on the rosters, the players are very familiar with each other because a lot of them do move around from team to team depending on the circumstances and what they're looking for. This is Stutz up top. A little Stutter step. He's like he said, he's deceptive underneath. High floater, unable to convert. That's White with the rebound. What a great asset to have. The big guy right from the rebound brings the ball up as a point guard. Everybody is running for the Lightning that time. And I think that one's going to be a blocking foul. We're going to see White and Boyd come out of the game. And uh, coming in, that looks like Frederick Edmond and Marvin Singleton, Singleton coming who, into the uh, game there for the London Lightning. Got a significant playing time last week against last game against Windsor that we were here, and really Sean when he got uh, some playing time. We weren't really it was sort of an unknown quantity to us, but not anymore. Hard working, battles for everything. So Kyle Johnson in the corner, swings the ball up top to Singleton, to freezing again. No real bigs in the game. And Friesen just weaves his way through the defense and up against the backboard, he puts it in. I'm gonna apologize here, that was Tony Criswell and not Frederick Edmond coming into the game, so he's gonna be playing the five spot for the Lightning here. Ball swings to Stutz, long three-pointer, and it looks smooth. Gives a salute as he goes down the floor. They're gonna need those three-pointers, I think, to keep uh, London honest. They close the gap to four points here. Chriswell up top with Friesen again. He's taken a long three as well. We know London likes to shoot the threes. He got the most attempts and maids this year. That one doesn't go in. It's Williamson Jr. and another three. It's raining threes down here. Freezing cold outside, but it's raining threes. Quick dash by Kirk Williams. Thought he had knocked the ball loose, but like shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder contact on the defender that time. He Williams seemed Jr. really thrilled with the refs on that one. He thought he got a clean break there, and uh, he's going to go to the bench now instead. That's two fouls pretty early for Kirk Williams Jr. He's a guy 
who, as we mentioned, Niagara a little short-handed. He's a guy that they need to play some big minutes tonight. So this is Ryan Anderson. Throws it in the far corner to Singleton and shoots the three as well. It was wide open, so of course, let's take it. And rebounded by the Lightning by Kyle Johnson. In the corner, that's Chris Well trying to take an attempt on a fadeaway jumper. Niagara coming up with the ball. Stutz working hard for position down underneath against against uh, Kyle Johnson. And a long three-pointer again by Tyshawn Patterson. And that's Chriswell hanging on to the ball. Here comes Anderson bringing it up top. Swings it quickly to Friesen. He's wide open. He was in a rhythm. You can see that was from here. We can see it going in. Joel Friesen having himself a game here. Usually it's been his defense that marks his key contribution to the game. But so far... The shooting of Friesen giving problems to the Niagara River Lions. And Niagara has been allowing teams to shoot a league worst 38% from three point land when they're playing the River Lions. So that's something they're going to have to tighten up is that perimeter defense. And you're talking about Joel Friesen's defense. And what did he do? He just got the charge on Tyshawn Patterson, sacrificing his body underneath. This is another versatile player that we've talked about, Ryan Anderson. Yeah. It's a little history on Ryan Anderson that we, uh, he's a very smooth player and takes it to the hoop. He's from Nebraska, 6'4". Did win a championship with Windsor, so he has some pedigree in the league as well. It's a Ben with the ball, trapped by Friesen, no elf, of course. And a holding foul on Chris Wells. He's trying to get around Chris Commons, but that's always tough to do. That's Chris Commons out of South Carolina Aiken, six foot nine, four-year veteran of the MBLC. Stutz, guarded by Singleton, a bit of a mismatch in size there. Ben with the freezing on him. Tough for him to get anywhere. That kind of suffocating defense. Long three-point shot, fade away. Kyle Johnson with bringing the ball up slowly. 17 seconds left in the quarter. 15 seconds left. Shot clock, two shot differential. Sorry, five seconds left on the shot clock. They're one and the same. And a fadeaway three uh, does not hit anything. Friesen tries to throw up a last second three as well. Well, I thought, thought London's offense was clicking fine. River lines sort of had a hard time finding the stride, but in the end there, they've closed it to six points, and they've held their own. You know, considering how London's come out in the first quarter, they've been pretty much destroying teams in the first quarter so far this season. So that's a very good effort by the Niagara River Lions to sort of wait until the storm calmed down, and then they made a bit of a run of their own at the end of the quarter there. A uh, very impressive play from the River Lions. It's a good start to their game, and it's going to be interesting for London now because London's used to coming out to these big leads to start the game. I don't think they've really been this close to another team after the first quarter. So now they've got their work ahead of them to get ready and to, and to have to deal with Niagara that's going to come out of this, this, uh, this break right here. And they're going to have set plays. Coach Gross Lacole is going to have it set up, and they know what they're going to be doing. Gross Lacole, one of the best at drawing up plays out of timeouts. So he, you know that Niagara's going to have a nice start to this quarter. Well, as we said, Niagara is a bit short, short-handed and under the weather. We'll see as the quarters go by how third and fourth quarter, if they still have the stamina to hang in there. But right now, they're staying stride for stride, almost basket for basket with the London Lightning, the highest scoring team by far in the league. I think they're averaging 120 points a game by the London Lightning. Taking a look at some of the stats so far in this game, your leaders for the London Lightning, Joel Friesen has eight points. Uh, Julian Boyd's had a nice start to this game. Six points, four rebounds, and three assists. And Royce White, five points, three assists, two rebounds. Taking a look at the River Lions, you've got six points from Kirk Williams Jr., six from Marcus Lewis, and uh, five points there from Chris Commons. The rebounds are 11 to 8 in favor of the London Lightning. Uh, Lightning shooting 60% from the field and 42% from three-point land. The River Lions only 47% from the field, but that's not so bad because they're shooting 57% from three-point land. Uh, some of the other numbers to look at, assists 8-7 to seven for the Lightning. 
And uh, the turnovers are even at three apiece. So other than the six points on the board, this is pretty well an even game on the stat line. You know, one of the points I find uh, interesting, of course, Niagara went out and got Commons, and they've got Logan Stutz. I know Logan Stutz might not be feeling too well, uh, but the points in the paint, very much in London's favor right now, 18 to six. And then the bench scoring, again, we know Niagara's shorthanded, so, you know, that number's not gonna be too big, but it's 10 to three in London's favor right now. Looking to push the ball into, into oh, Stutz. Okay. He raised his elbow and knocked the London player down and immediately goes over and apologizes to uh, Ryan Anderson, I believe that is. And he puts his hand up so he's okay, but I look well, maybe a little worse than what it was, but uh, definitely ran him over. Did Logan Stutz trying to get to his position, and again, he apologizes to Ryan Anderson. Good sportsmanship there. Stutz is saying a story again. <laughs> Good sportsmanship. Lightning with the ball up top. This is Kyle Johnson, again, another good ball handler. And that was Anderson trying to drive into the lane and gets hammered. Foul call on Windsor. That's going to be the second on Stutz in a row right there. Pardon me, they're going to give that one to Lewis. That could have been bad for Niagara. We mentioned they're shorthanded. And if you have two fouls on Stutz that quick uh, and have to pull him out of the game, that's just one more player you can't play. Two shots for Anderson. Just looking, you know, as uh, as the games go by and we start learning more about players' tendencies and we see their skill sets, pretty impressed with the London skill sets for bringing the ball up and how many people they can really count to do that. Other, you know, their starting point guard is Junior Cadogan, but Kyle Johnson can do it. We know that uh, Ryan Anderson can bring it up. Of course, we know Garrett Williamson can bring it up. So they have plenty of ball handlers to bring the ball up. They're going to call another foul here. This one's going to be on Bilal Ben for... Uh chicken winging his way around uh, lightning defender there and uh, so the lightning get the ball back here that's three quick fouls in this quarter for the river lines i mean we're not even 30 seconds in and they got three team fouls on the board well sometimes tiredness translates into uh, cheap fouls i'm not sure if that's what's happening but that's a beautiful strong move by anthony criswell again a nice entry pass from the top of the key Looks like that's becoming a bread and butter play for the London Lightning. Chris Commons working hard to get our knees. Stutz does a ball fake. It's a foul. I think holding off the ball, uh, Kyle Johnson, when Tyler Murray was trying to go back door. I think that's what was the call. Yes, it is. So Ben inbounding the ball for Niagara. Throws it into Commons. Chriswell all over him. Commons puts the ball on the floor, trying to take him down, but Chriswell's holding his ground. And fade away a hook shot. Huge rebound that time by Ryan Anderson. Again, bringing the ball up. And a spinoff move by Chriswell, held by Chris Commons. Nice block. Stood his ground. Behind the back pass into the corner, deflected by London. And Stutz with the ball up top. Chriswell still him. down at the other end there. That was a nice backdoor play. For Marcus Lewis, you're right. Chriswell was still down the other end. The referee's call for an injury stoppage in play, and Royce White is coming in as a substitute. Well, Chriswell came down hard on the other end of the floor and looked like almost all the way landed on his elbow. That's why he's holding as he goes off here. Uh, he's a very big part. Their rotation of White, Boyd, and Chriswell has been excellent this season, so having one of your bigs go out like that hurts the London Lightning. Anderson forces a shot that time. Good defensive position by Niagara. Quick move and oh, oh Marcus Lewis. He was a that was a quick baseline move and up in the air he went. No chance for London to stop him there. He had his mind made up right away. This is Royce White getting underneath, using his body. A little bit of a hook shot, a little too strong off the back of the rim. This is Murray bringing it up. Nice bounce pass to Stutz. Great pair of hands. That long stride of his. He's into the hoop within two strides. And a bit of a run by the Niagara River Lions, 34-30. There's Cal Julius calling the timeout there. He wants to get his troops back in check here. He really did not like what happened in transition here. London prides themselves on their transition play. And uh, you had on one end Julian, or pardon me, Royce White uh, go for the little teardrop that did not work. But coming back, I, I, I think we saw some slower feet than he would have liked to see. And, I mean, Murray made an excellent pass, but Logan Stutz got to the rim with absolutely no impediment whatsoever. And uh, that's not something you like to see if you're Coach Julius, especially after you spent 
uh, basically all day game planning for Logan Stutz. You know he's their best player. You know he's the guy who's going to do the damage. And uh, when you let him go free like that, that's when you want to call that timeout, slow things down, and kind of figure out what happened. Well, Stutz, after that missed teardrop by White, he hustled down the right side of the floor, and his player, Murray, found him for the nice bounce pass. All credit to Logan Stutz. There's a reason why he was a leading scorer last year in MVP. He does a lot of little things right, and hustle is one of them. So for, if you're a Niagara or a River Lions fan and you're wondering, Richard and Marty did not dress tonight, even though he is on the roster. Sammy Siglinski also did not dress tonight, even though he's on the roster. Mike Allison is on injured reserve, and hence, they're down to their shorter bench today. There was one pickup by Niagara, Rotimi Osuntola out of the University of Windsor, but this is his very first exposure, I believe to Niagara on the NBL scene, so I'm not sure if he'll get some playing time tonight or yet. I don't think he's had much time to practice with the team and even know what the plays are. Yeah, we've so, only seen a little bit of him in that Windsor game, not a whole ton uh, so far. They did only re-add him to the roster. It was a bit of a weird situation. They had a Marty on the IR on December 28th. That's when they first picked up Osantola. Then January 4th, they took a Marty off the IR, released Osantola, put uh, Allison on the IR, and then signed Osantola back. So a bit of a weird uh, up and down situation with him. Johnson, the ball up top to White again. It seems that's one of his favorite positions. Just drives with ease, holding off the defenders with his strength, and that left handed layup softly off the backboard. Ben with the ball up top. He's getting a lot of playing time, of course. He's one of the primary ball handers, and with uh, Zaglinski out. He's going to need to be out there. Stutz with the turnover. And there he is diving for the ball, Stutz. Hustling back. That is Frederick Edmonds with the ball. A little bit of wild underneath there. But again, Stutz got his hands in there everywhere. This is Murray. One of the Canadians on the Niagara team. Commons trying to throw the ball into Stutz, great defense, loses the ball up top to Murray, but he tips it to Logan Stutz. Stutz with his great pair of hands, gets the shot off, shot off quickly, and he gets fouled. You know, it's a shame Murray didn't get that basket there. He actually made a beautiful cut to the rim. We've seen some really smart plays from Tyler Murray here. He's a guy who comes off the bench to play point guard, but he's getting more minutes here with Sammy Zaglinski's injury. Stutz makes his first one. Niagara still hanging around. 36-31. Oh, Rim's the second one. Usually very reliable free throw shooter. Again, here's White. Has a hesitation dribble and just freezes the defender, in this case Stutz, and up with his right hand this time. No answer from Niagara so far for Royce White. I think a lot of teams are going to have problems this year with that. Once he gets his feet back underneath him and is getting his basketball IQ back in place, and his feel for the game, Stutz with a drive, looked like a travel there, but takes gets the shot off. Was Lewis over the back rebound by Ben, trying to turn the corner. Good defense by London. Murray with a wild shot off the three point. Did not look good again. White up top recognizes. Right away, he's got a little guy on him, no hesitation, and he raced down the floor after that shot. And there's where the Lightning are most dangerous. Coach Julius loves how this team plays in transition. He loves to get out on the floor, and that time Royce White able to convert. This Lewis again with the ball, driving to the hoop, up high, gets hit hard. Thinks it's a bit of a strong foul by Friesen there. A little bit upset, and I think rightly so. He was very exposed up in the air there. But Lewis taking it hard to the hoop for Niagara. I don't know if that was intentional, but it was definitely a little bit reckless, I thought, by Friesen. Especially after the man's taken off in the air, you have no chance of getting to the ball. But Friesen's always a tenacious, physical defender. That's part of his game. I know there was no intention to injure, but... It's just one of those plays. Sometimes accidents happen. I think uh, Joel Friesen doesn't have a reputation for being a dirty player. So I, I'd say that was a little bit of an accident there. Lewis misses his first one. Oh, 
Westbrook Williams Jr. back on the floor again for Niagara. Came in for Stutz. Williams behind the back and again! Oh my! Behind the back, around the guard and a slam dunk! When have we ever seen in the NBLC a center do a move like that? Royce White with the out of this world play. Josiah Moore with the ball. Now Kirk Williams Jr. trying to take things and step back fadeaway. Big board and taken by Kyle Johnson. White looking for a screen for Johnson. Johnson was going to go back door, but got held up by a defender against Johnson. Trying to beat his man one-on-one. -on -one. This is Williamson, Garrett Williamson with 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Up top, throws the ball out quick to three-point shot by Friesen, unable to convert. Here's Ben trying to push the ball up, going back door, just like we said. That seems to be one of the favorite plays, and that was Josiah Moore with a tough finish. Josiah Moore, a guy we didn't really know a ton about coming into this season of NBLC basketball, but he's been a very good rebounder on this team and a key, pe a key piece off the bench. And in the corner for Singleton. Unable to convert, but a good rebound by Johnson. I'm not sure foul was called on Williams Jr. or on the London player. On London. It was a battle either way. I think it could have gone either way. So Kyle Johnson got his foul, his first one. So Ben and uh, Josiah Moore on the floor as bringing up the guard along with Williams on the floor so far. Commons is back in the game as well, as is Tyshawn Patterson. We haven't seen too much of him yet. This is Commons, a little ball fake on Royce White, and a running hook shot off the backboard a la Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, if you remember his name. Formerly Lou Alcindor at UCLA. Mm -hmm. Yeah, going pretty far back there. Hey, even in Milwaukee, you have Lou Alcindor <laughs> on the back there. There you go. You are a historian. You don't look old enough to be a historian. White with beautiful pass in the boy. That time he gets blocked with a triple team, that Chris Commons. But again, that combination of Boyd and White, double team, and then up top, Niagara needs to swing the ball quickly. That's a reaching foul, the very last by Garrett Williamson. Just like that, we've seen the River Lions. We talked about how they picked up three fouls in the first 30 seconds of this quarter. Haven't committed a foul since then, whereas London just picked up their fifth foul of this quarter. So uh, that could be some trouble there. Of course, London, we mentioned earlier, uh, committing the most fouls per game in the league, and uh, this quarter certainly not helping. Hager trying to get the ball in. Chris Commons had to come up and rescue him, and White's all over him, guarding him as closely as anything. Seven seconds, five seconds on the shot clock. Ben's got the ball underneath. He pushes off Friesen. I don't know if it's a blocking or a, looks like it's going to be called a blocking and two shots. I think that's a generous call of anything. He was still spinning around, I thought. Could have gone either way. So Bilal Ben, number two for Niagara at the line, shooting two. You know, Ben's kind of an interesting guy. He's six foot six, so he's got shooting guard size. But he has some point guard skills, and having a guy like that adds to your team's versatility. And for example, right now, he's on the floor with Tyshawn Patterson, who plays a bit more of a shooting guards type of game. So by having a smaller guy who plays like a shooting guard and having a bigger guy who plays like a point guard, you get to mix and match on offense a bit. And uh, it helps your team chemistry overall and uh, your lineup versatility. Because now if you want to go big, you can put in below Ben at your point guard and uh, have that bigger lineup. Well, we know that London has lots of tall ball handlers that are quite frequently put into the position of ball handlers. That's a good matchup. Again, Royce White picking his way, just like tiptoeing through the tulips all the way to the rim and gets fouled. Mm -hmm. He just seems to have that pace that throws defenders off. Great ball control and able to get to the rim at will is what it seems like. Yeah, he shifts gears from the perimeter uh, excellently. So you see him sort of make that slow move to go around a guy and then just burst on his way to the rim. And uh, he's, he's a special player. He's a very special player. Going back to what we were saying as we see Royce White is going to make that fee that free throw as well about how, how the having a bigger point guard can fix your lineups. We're seeing on the court right now for London, 
Uh, they've got Junior Cadugan at point, but we've also seen guys like Williamson and Anderson play the point. And that's going to be a great play by Julian Boyd drawing the charge for the London Lightning. That was a full head-on charge as well, but he's, he's built strong enough to take that one. And he had him lined up in his sights. Turnover by Niagara, 43-36, five minutes to go in the second quarter. And the London ball outs on the sideline. You know, much has been made of Royce White leading his college team in every stack category. He's doing that right now with the London Lightning. They're leading scorer, rebounder, and assist man. Again, he gives it to Boyd inside, letting Boyd post up. Dugan up top, trying to break through if he can. In the corner it is to Williamson. Quick outlet, Pat, quick to the top for Ryan Anderson. Williamson coming back door to snare that offensive board. Reset the shot clock. Junior Kadugan swings over to White, quickly over to Williamson. Close him up down low, looking for Boyd cutting. And that time Boyd, unable to convert this time, a little too strong off the backboard. I think he was anticipating some contact there and never got it. Nice Sean Patterson with the ball up top. I haven't heard too much from him offensively yet. Kirk Williams Jr. throwing all the way across. This is Ben up top. Josiah Moore trying to lob it over to Commons. Unable to do it. Turn around. Fade away. Unable to make. Was Bilal Ben. And here again, White, the primary ball handler. When have you seen that? Nice soft pass inside to Williamson. Back out to Kadugan. They're going to reset the London Lightning. Dugan with the ball up top, trying to post him up. Julian Boyd had, can shoot the three. Unable to make it that time again. Williamson with an offensive rebound. Up top for Anderson. Got caught off, jumping without making a good pass. Almost got caught midair. Cuts it into the corner for Williamson. Nice ball fake. Great ball movement by London. And an easy foul line jumper from the elbow for Ryan Anderson. Great ball movement that time. Very patient. The ball fake there by Moore trying to get his defender off the floor. Ben guarded by Cadugan. A little weave pattern up top between Moore and Ben. And Patterson is calm and he's got position underneath there. He's going to see another hook shot. No, that's the fadeaway on the shot clock buzzer. Well, Chris Commons, he's at his best when he's able to play that mid range game because that allows him to drift to the three-point line later in the game as soon as he gets teams comfortable with that. Again, Julian Boy that time with a nice catch, but a, he was in a tough position, but good body control. Uh, used that backboard is what he did. 47-38, so it's growing to a nine-point lead here. The game slowed down somewhat for Niagara. Swing the ball right over to the far corner, and again, he stepped on the sideline. A lot of players having difficulty getting set up for their shot off the pass, sliding their foot over the end line before they catch the ball on our inbounds. And again, I'm aware that the, that gap there is the smallest part of the court, but even so, it seems like in London more often than any other arena, that out, that out of bounds line, when you're in there for that corner three, just seems to sneak out and grab you by the heel as shooters try to set up there, because it seems to happen here more than any other place. Well, I think the courts are the same everywhere. Chris, so I don't know. It's all perception, I guess. I think that was a moving screen, I believe, by White. If I'm being honest, I think it's mostly because of the thin color of the line here. Most uh, most arenas have a much wider well, out of bounds true. line I, along I, there. You're correct on that one. Now, now that we look closely at it, usually the end lines, the side lines, are a, a broader band. You're absolutely right. Stutz back in the game. The last two minutes of this quarter. I wonder if they're saving them for the second half. Trouble is <laughs> Tyshawn Patterson, double team, throws the ball up high. Murray throws it in the corner. Stutz just waiting patiently in the corner, unable to convert a wide open three. There's Kadugan trying to go around Commons. Oh, great pass, great look. Stutz throws it down the court right away for Niagara. Niagara in, in the key in a flash, but that was a great pass. Here's Stutz again, flashing through the key, through the key, unable to get off the backboard. White. Just enough to keep him off the score sheet. Anderson with a quick three from way oh, oh. outside. Ouch. You know, London's pressure was really creating havoc there for Niagara's offense. It's unfortunate uh, Anderson's shot didn't quite turn out the way he had hoped, but the London Lightning doing a great job defensively enforcing some bad decisions from the River Lions. 
Almost Murray up top of the ball. Just stuts again for a wide open. Three, unable to convert again. Even though that is a good looking shot for him and a good choice. That's Cadugan. Bit of a lazy pass that time. Deflected by Nagger out of bounds for London. Just over a minute to go in this first half. 49-38. Late substitution. Singleton coming in for White. A little talking back and forth between Kyle Julius and Royce White. Trying to understand each other's strengths and what the strategies are. It's going to be a learning curve to work with a talent like that, that's for sure. And Cadugan weaves his way in, takes the contact, twisting layup off the backboard. And the crowd roars his approval. Well, 38 points by the River Lions, so not too many points in this second quarter. It's pretty well the best half I think London has had statistically along with the uh, last game against Windsor, 37 or 38. But the tail of the tape is the second half for London for defense. And like you said, Chris, the fourth quarter, they have been outscored this year at the London Lightning. So Yeah, we'll see when we get to the fourth quarter. But as for this quarter, uh, they've held Niagara to only 14 points so far in the second quarter. And uh, it's a really nice turnaround for them. They, of course, didn't get the start they usually like to have in that first quarter. But now we're seeing uh, some of the defense that we saw in that Windsor game show up here. And I think uh, Orangeville, Orangeville has been an excellent team this season. I think uh, having to play Orangeville uh, kind of gave them a wake-up call that they aren't the best team in this conference and that there's a team that's better than them. So I think uh, they're going to look at every game from here until maybe the next time they play Orangeville has a chance to get better and to get to that level that they want to be at. Well, London has been a power since the league has started. Of course, uh, Coach Michael Ray Richardson, coached here for three years, along with two championships. Great owner here in Frisia as well. Great facility. So they want to carry on the tradition of being the strongest team in the East. Just a minute left, minute four left in this second quarter in the first half. 17 fouls, six on London, 16 fouls on the River Lions. And it'll be Niagara ball in the, the end line. That's Patterson with the ball, Tyshawn Patterson. Common sets the early screen. Looking inside for Stutz is what they're trying to find. He's working hard to get position. That was Singleton coming around hard, denying that entry pass, even though he's definitely out-heighted. I wouldn't say outsized, but out-heighted with Logan Stutz. Well, Singleton, a scrappy guy. He really forced his way onto this team with his training camp. Yeah, you had said that uh, earlier this year that uh, really wasn't a bit of an unknown, but he really earned his way by his hard work and, and play during practice and trying to make the team. And here he is getting some playing time for a second second game in a row, really, that we've seen and uh, contributing. Well, even the way he closed out on Tyler Murray there on defense, he's not a guy who's going to put up a ton of stats, but the way he can make those little plays that make a difference, that time he forced the 24-second uh, violation. It's Chris Well driving in the hoop. Stutz came from out of bounds, but I'm thinking they're pointing their aggro's way. So I'm not sure what the call is. Must The ball must have hit the end line before Stutz picked it up. I was going to say, I thought it was Stutz standing there arguing he wasn't out of bounds while he was standing out of bounds, but it's going to be <laughs> river line ball. 19 seconds left. 10 seconds left on the shot clock. One second differential. It's Patterson with the ball up top, trying to take it all the way to the hoop. Sort of loses... Possession on the way out. I'm not sure if he got hit by the defender, which is what the ref is calling. If he just lost control, I got the benefit of the call. But either way, a strong move to the hoop. Patterson going to the line. No one really in foul trouble uh, on the floor right now. You got three fouls on Joel Friesen uh, of the London Lightning, and then three, or pardon me, three on uh, Kirk Williams Jr. for the Niagara River Lions. Only two players that are really in any sort of foul trouble for either team. Well, only 12 team fouls for London Lightning so far in this half. I'm pretty sure that would be probably the lowest count of the year so far. Very different than last game. 
Of course, there were 70 combined fouls in that Orangeville game. I think there was in the uh, Windsor game as well when we were looking Just at it. Just about. Right? Getting very close <laughs> to 70 as well. It's a lot of fouls. It's one of those things that takes away from the flow of the game, too. And I understand, it, it, I understand the ref's point, too. You have to call a foul if you see it. But at the same time, there should be uh, taking account of the flow of the game in that. And I think they've done a good job here tonight with that. I think they have, actually, yeah. Well, you know, fouls are a lesson to the player as well. Usually, you have committed. The refs usually aren't wrong very often. So you've done something that's created that foul, either in poor position or not moving your feet. So it's a learning curve for the players as well. So, timeout call with... Just a few seconds left in this half, trying to set up a play. 52-39, grown to a 13-point lead here for London over the Niagara River Lions. Any word on the game, World Junior? I don't have the World Junior for you, but I can tell you right now in the fourth quarter, Halifax is leading the Cape Breton Highlanders. Well, okay, we're sticking uh, to basketball, are we? Okay. Yeah, 93 to 82. What are you, the PVR and the PVR so you can see it later? <laughs> I don't want to spoil it for myself, John. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're not going to get away from here without knowing the score. So. <laughs> 4.6 seconds left. Let's see what Coach Kyle Julius has put in play. I do believe the ball should be advanced is what he's pointing to, but they're getting on the inbounds. Dugan with it, pushing the ball hard to the hoop. Throws it quickly out for Singleton. I don't think that was the player that they wanted to throw it to, but he got the shot off. So the final score after the first half is 52-39. Great defensive quarter by the London Lightning. We're going to throw it over to Aaron and Justin for the halftime update, and we'll see you at the other side of the half. Okay, gentlemen, we're at the half, 52-39, the Lightning leading over the River Lions. Welcome back down courtside for the Noxham halftime. Aaron Sanders, Justin Prince, and two words to describe London's performance so far, interior play. Yes, sir, right now they are just absolutely dominating inside the paint. 34 points in paint right now. Of their points right now, just a 17 points, I believe it is right now. Actually, 18, pardon me, are currently from outside the paint. Of those, three are from three, nine of them are from three-pointers, two of them from just outside the key, the rest from free throws. That is a major defensive issue if you are Niagara right now. And turning over to the Niagara, you hit it right on the nose. I mean, offensively, they are forcing up shots, which is not good. That's not the way Niagara plays. They're usually great on the transition, but when you force up shots and have poor read on defense, they're getting beat on their weak side, so that is definitely a defensive issue to turn up for the second half. Yes, sir, right now, right now, on top of the, like, the River Lions cannot defend inside the paint, and then on the offensive end, they seem to be playing more isolation offense than trying to do bold movement, and that is costing them right now. Yes, they're shooting well right now, 44%. That's decent, but right now it is not working for shots right now. They are still down 52 to 39 right now for a reason. They need to have that ball movement go up. That, and they're not taking chances, too. Exactly. I mean, we look at it earlier in the first quarter. If you contrast, if you make a contrast between the first quarter and now, the first quarter from two weeks ago, you could say there's a difference, but the difference, the main difference is they are not, they're forcing up shots. I mean, one key issue, as we already explained, but not a good first quarter, but I believe that Marcus Lewis slammed 10 minutes, for two minutes in the second quarter, really capped off their confidence. They really got on on a great route, but they need to do more of that inside in order to prevail. Yes, sir, right now. They have, Niagara as a team has 18 points in the game right now. In the paint right now, I should say. Yes. That, when you're being, with the scoring they're having right now, with the difficulties, yeah, they need to start getting inside more and still getting that movement on top of everything else. That is a major problem still. Because right now, look at the stats. Royce White, 14 points right now. Yeah, 
Ryan Anderson, six points of those, two of them from the free throw line. Right now, London is just dominating inside that paint with most of their players right now. That's been their game so far in this early goings of the season. But how about that Royce crossover dunk? Royce White crossover dunk in the second quarter. I mean, that was something that really got this Bud Gardens faithful off their feet. Yes, sir. He, it feels like he's in a whole nether dimension almost like on the offensive end right now because it seems almost every single game we've had a play similar to that if this season with Royce White right now. You had that one. You had in the opener, I believe, if he had a fake pass out to the outside before the layup and slam dunk inside. Like, he has just been one of those energetic players for London. Exactly. When, you, when he explodes in the mid-range, that spells out trouble. Out of this one, out of sight, out of mind, let's go quickly to the first MBLC Players of the Week of this season from the Atlantic Division. Well, first off, let's just say the winners of this Players of the Week a pair of six foot eight dynamos. We start off the Atlantic Division. Billy White, 6'8", San Diego State from the Halifax Hurricanes, averaging 17.7 points per game. And most people are saying he is the key reason why the Halifax Hurricanes are still undefeated at this moment. Yes, sir. I think that is actually the main reason why he was awarded that Player of the Week award for the Atlantic Division. Because he played very well and is also still playing well, in fact. He is one of those key players, enough the key player right now for Halifax right now, which is doing really well coming off their championship season. That's right. And over we go to the Central Division. Justin Moss, six foot eight from Buffalo, uh, Orangeville A's. He's averaging a double double right now. 27 points per game, 10.3 rebounds, and 2.7 steals. It's not surprising to the Orangeville faithful, but it should be impressive to the MBLC nation because he is just having a monster game right now, especially in the last few games. Yes, sir, because he is basically a double double machine for this A squad right now. It seems like everyone on those days are clicking, especially for Moss, because he's been the rebounding machine for this team. He's been able to score inside the paint. He's been able to lead, get baskets along with his teammates so far this season. The A's look like a much better team compared to last season, that's for sure. Absolutely. Top of the cream of the crop in the Central Division. All right, from the Forest City to other cities, we go to the out-of-town scores. Cape Breton Highlanders traveling to Scotiabank Center to play against the Halifax Hurricanes. How's that turning out? Well, right now it's just finishing up just this second, in fact. The Halifax Hurricanes have officially beaten the Cape Breton Highlanders 103-86, to and that is going to get them another victory. Yes, they're within the final three seconds right now, but it's all but over right now. Halvax stealing in our victory. Nowhere but going up for the Hurricanes. As for the Highlanders, they still got one win, but as we mentioned over and over again here, play a potential for this team. Over we go to Moncton, Moncton Coliseum. The Miracles play against the St. John Riptide, and the Riptide are taking that as last time we checked, 74-61 in the third. Riptide once again proving that they are underdogs in the Atlantic Division. Yes, we were talking about this actually on the way up here to London today, that they are a very talented team this season and, and are much better, it seems almost like, compared to last season as well when they were still the Mill Rats right now. You know, they are a good team as well, and I still also like their opponents as well on top of that Moncton as well. Gabe Friedman leading the charge for St. John and everybody else. Now we go back to the Forest City. Keys for the second half. Let's start off with Niagara. A sheer, sheer bit of important things to take care of. What would you say if you're Grasso Coley? Right now, one of the main things I would say if I was him right now is get the back, defend the paint right now. That is a major struggle right now for Niagara with those points in the paint. In fact, it seems most of London's opportunities, if you look at the shot chart, are inside the paint. They've barely taken a shot outside the paint overall. So they need to lock down that interior, slow down London's pace, and try and figure out a way to make sure to make defensive stops going on. No question about it. they got to read the transitions first and foremost. That's been London's game throughout this whole time, and they have been beating inside like you said. they got to be vocal on both ends of the court. I would say be vocal on the D, but offensively they are not getting shots in well and they got to read their passes too at the interim exactly because right now if you look at the communication issue with the offensive side there were times when there's possessions where they were just going out there going immediately isolation no one was moving and standing still on the possession that is a major problem on the offensive end and then when they started getting that communication it seemed as soon as they got it to let's say logan stutz or chris commons or marcus lewis the communication just seemed to stop and yet 
They had to try and dribble themselves out, and they had difficulty. So they need to get that communication level up, that's for sure. They got to really project that ball that ball movement real well. And London, let's just, let's just put it as this inside game is good. And Royce White, he is not having foul trouble. Matter of fact, none of the London players are having foul trouble at all. That's one thing, but... How would you finish off this final half for if you're London? Right now, that's one of the main things is keeping Niagara struggling on the offensive end. That's for one thing. Two, making sure that they make the adjustments and make it from the outside shots. Because right now, like as I've said, they made three three-pointers so far in this game. They have been able to win the paint is closing up, find those outside shots. If they can make those, that is a major thing. As well, you have to, like I said, make those defensive stops as well as keep the pace under what they prefer. Kyle Julius really had to go back to the drawing board, back to step one for him after that eight-point loss in mono last night. And the, the gameplay they're doing right now, they're really doing it justice. I think they have to keep on going long and finish. If they finish strong, then A, they'll get more points on the board, and B, they'll have more trips to the line, which they have been successful at this present time. Yes, sir, right now. No, the game plan is definitely working much better than compared to their game at the Athlete Institute because, right, like I said before, Julius was not happy with how it was executed in that game. He's got to be happy with how it's executing this time around. That's for sure. And as you mentioned, from the free throw line, 7 of 8 so far. Niagara, 3 of 8. So that is another minus on the Riverline side as well and a positive for the Lion, Lightning. It's that free advice that's costing the River Lions right now, whether they're in the perimeter or taking a free throw. 52-39, lightning over the River Lions. Second half starting in just around five minutes. John and Chris Croucher will be back on the call. We'll see you at the Knoxrum post game. But now, this message of special interest.
welcome back, sports fans, to the Budweiser Gardens here in London, Ontario for our MBL game between the London Lightning and River Lions. Thanks to Aaron and Justin for that halftime recap. Chris, what did you find out during halftime for some stats there? Well, you're looking at uh, one of the leaders for the London Lightning, of course. We talked about him a lot. Royce White, uh, 14 points, 6 rebounds. And uh, he's also got himself two assists, or pardon me, three assists, and uh, all three numbers. He's tied with Kadugan and assists, but all three numbers lead the team. And uh, he's had a heck of a game here. Joel Friesen, eight points. The majority of that came in the first quarter. Uh, he's had some foul issues since. He's already at three. Julian Boyd, eight points, four rebounds. And uh, Junior Kadugan, six points, three assists. Look at the Niagara River Lions. you got Marcus Lewis, who's had a heck of a game here. Ten points. Uh, in that first half, Chris Commons, nine points, three rebounds, and Logan Stud six points, six rebounds for the Niagara River Lions. I think one of the things that stands out to me so far has been the points in the paint. We've seen London dominate in that category uh, pretty much every game except that one against Orangeville. This game, they're up 34 to 18 in that department. Okay, second half's underway. I think there's good minute managing by the Niagara coach, Graz local, locally. Uh, for the Niagara because they are shorthanded. So I thought he did a great job managing the minutes of Logan Stutz and Chris Commons. Kirk Williams Jr., we haven't heard too much of from him yet in this game. We know he can shoot the ball well. Played well against London the last time they were here at Budweiser Gardens. I'm John Van Howling along with Chris Croucher. Hopefully you're enjoying the game today and getting to see some of your favorite players and maybe some of your relatives maybe if they're playing. I know a lot of family and friends are watching watching them play today. Travel that time on Josiah Moore. So it's 52-39 to recap the start of the second half. Looks like the same starting lineup for London. Trying to think, yes, it looks like the same starting lineup as well for Niagara that they had at the beginning of the game. Ball up top to Anderson, trying to post up. White inside, Kadugan again with the ball up top. Down to 10 seconds on the shot clock already. Kadugan trying to go under. This is Julian Boyd with a nice setup from Kadugan. Unable to convert this time. He was hot last time he played here. But this time he misses. I think he's a one for something, I believe. There's Commons up top. Moore again. Thought about taking the shot. Got quickly double teamed. White was helping. This time fadeaway jumper and almost double bounces. Doesn't go in. Beautiful outlet pass by White. Julian Boyd taking the ball to the hoop. Just a little too strong. He's working hard for the boards. Nice underhand pass off the backboard is Williamson. A little bit of a scatterbrain possession there for the London Lightning, but Julian Boyd recovered nicely. And that pass to Williamson was a very heads-up play, and Williamson just so good at finishing around the rim. Then up top, this is Williams taking the ball in, trying to force it up against Boyd, but Boyd just held his ground. And White again, nice soft pass to Williamson. Great delivery, flashing down the middle is Royce White. That was a hard foul. Otherwise, that was going to be, I think, a slam dunk. Well, we've seen Royce White do that a couple of times in this game alone. And i got to be honest, this is probably the most comfortable we've really seen him operate in this offense. And he's had himself a very good game here. He's got a chance to add two more points to his name. Yes, I agree with the word comfortable you said as well. It looked uh, the first game, you know, he hadn't played really competitively. I think it was over two, two and a half years. And I think it showed. And then a couple games under his belt, and here we are. I think we're starting to really see him feel at ease with his teammates and what he can do and what he can't do on the floor and helping his teammates. And his skill sets, of course, we already know what they are. He's a unicorn. Not many guys are like him in the NBL. Ah, that's what you mean by that. I didn't know what you were talking about. <laughs> Little spin around move, and he gets his own boards. I think he's padding his rebounds that time, was Josiah Moore. But he ended up with the basket, staying with it. Kadugan up top, guarded by Ben. Early screen by Royce White. Trying to get to the hoop. And Williamson quickly swings it. A wild pass into the corner, Junior Kadugan. I think unable, Coach Julius, unable to get that one. I think Coach Julius wanted him to go up with that one. We saw Julius motioning. Up, up to Williamson there because he knows Williamson. He really turned the corner. He had a chance at the rim there. Didn't take it. That's Marcus Lewis with the ball. Again with Josiah Moore, Bilal Ben, Chris Commons, and Kirk Williams Jr. Long three point by Commons. 
picked up by Anderson. They're sort of slowing it down there, London here, instead of fast breaking it. Up top again, a familiar position with White up top of the key. Anderson getting to the hoop, dishes it out to Cadogan. He wasn't ready to shoot, so he had to bring the ball back out. Down to nine seconds on the shot clock. Anderson with the ball up top. Boyd releases to the hoop. Anderson's going to have to create something off the dribble himself. And a great pass. Does he get it off just in time? Unable to convert. Was Williamson. That went right through Julian Boyd's hands. That was a great pass. A pickoff by Cadogan. Goes hard to the hoop. Lays it off. Unable to convert as well. Niagara fortunate that London not converting on those easy putbacks. And unable to convert that time with the three-pointer. And here comes London running. Three on one. Going hard to the hoop. That time Anderson finishes it off. Niagara coming back quickly with Kirk Williams taking the hoop with a stutter step. Good defensive position by Cadogan. Throws him off. What do you want to do? And this is White with the ball again. Put the ball a little too far in front of him. Gave the defender opportunity. It's sort of become scramble game. A late foul. On Bill Alben there to stop the play. Uh, London had a fast break going. I believe that's actually going to be on uh, Boy. That might be on Junior Cadogan. Okay. So anyway, Julian Boyd is sitting on the bench. And in his place comes Anthony Criswell, number 22, if you're looking on the court for him. That's Marcus Lewis, 6'6", out of Eastern Kentucky. A lot of former NCAA players in this league, as we well know, as there are also Canadian University players playing here as well. It's like a holding foul underneath by Criswell on Kirk Williams Jr. I'm just going to say if, a little more, more information on some of the players when I get a chance. Six foot seven, if you're looking on a TV screen, hard to tell on the floor. Six foot seven from Bridgeport. It's also a former NBLC champion as a member of the Windsor Express. He was a, alongside Chris Commons, a big part of that team. Well, the two are back reunited in Niagara Falls in the second year of the team history. Three pointer that time by Moore, I believe it was. Back down to 12 points. The game looks like London's really trying to work hard on a half court offense. They're deliberately trying to slow the pace down a bit. Dugan physically guarded by Williams that time. The ball is down to two ball. seconds on the shot clock. And how do you miss the big guy underneath? Everybody rotated the ball. Forgot the man underneath, wide open. Well, White just stayed calm amongst the chaos, stuck in the eye of the storm, and he managed to be the only one left down low after all the passing from the London Lightning. Ben up top. Williams flashing the basket. Ben running to the hoop. That's good defense. Unfortunately for... That was Williams. I thought he had done a nice steal. That's a pickpocket here. Now Williams is going to get his chance to do it. So that was a great defensive play by Chriswell, but he turned it over. And Niagara end up getting back full court press here. Chriswell forced to bring up the ball, and Cadogan runs over the defender, Kirk Williams Jr., trying to get open. Unexpected pressure by Niagara Falls, and London couldn't handle it. And that's two bad plays there from Junior Cadogan. First, the turnover around the Bud Gardens logo on the on the London end of the court, and then of course he goes and bowls over what looked like I believe Kirk Williams Jr. And uh, those are the type of plays that hurt your team. There was really no need for uh, either of them. And uh, I think Coach is going to uh, give him some words here. Uh, shakes his hand. It's going to be polite, but he's definitely doing some coaching here. Well, Friesen comes in for Gadugan. Stutz has also come in. We've got the two bigs out there, Commons and Stutz. And a continuation play. A great body control by Ben that time. We've got the London player was trying to draw the charge, but really a submarine him underneath. And Ben was able to keep control. Bill L. Ben, six foot six, out of Niagara. Unable to convert the foul shot. White gets the ball, pushes up right away to Williamson. He's pushing the ball this time because they're wide open. And that's Johnson shooting. Williamson with an offensive board again. That's his third or fourth offensive board this game already. Now he's setting up the play. Johnson up top. Kyle Johnson, Garrett Williams, dream to the hoop. Great body control against the green and rolls it in. Again, Garrett Williamson so good at just gliding to the rim there. He bounces off contact perfectly and still has the hands to finish. It's a very pretty play there from the London Lightning veteran. 
He's also Canadian, though a dual citizenship. He played at a very familiar college, St. Joe's. St. Joseph's. Bill Alben, pull up jumper, and he makes it. It's two great plays for Ben, and unaware is Friesen. Looks like on the floor, Friesen just a little lazy coming to that ball that time, but nobody talking to him, saying that there's pressure. And that was Marcus Lewis putting the pressure on. I believe we got a timeout here as a, I believe it's a media timeout. And it's gonna give both coaches some time to plan here. Of course, we've talked about, well, it's gonna give Joel Friesen a time to plead his case too, but I believe we talked about Karas Lacole and how good he is at drawing up plays, coming out of timeouts, coming out of the end of a quarter, coming out of halftime. Uh, he's a really good schemer and uh, having Coach Julius at the other end, you've got another guy who's really all about the X's and O's. So this is a bit of a coach's battle we've seen London got that big lead in the second quarter, and they've done a very good job of maintaining. But they also haven't really pulled ahead the way I know that uh, Coach Julius would like to. We've seen London have struggles in the fourth quarter. We've talked about a lot this game, but that's because as long as you keep Niagara close, that problem gets magnified with each second that we get closer to the fourth quarter. And that puts more pressure on the team to answer in the fourth quarter to respond and uh, it, it's going to be interesting to see how close Niagara can keep this going into the fourth and whether or not London has fixed their problem with the fourth quarter or not. Well, it is early in the season, so we're starting to see some patterns, but like we said, teams are still getting to know each other. And coaches are putting their stamp on the team and figuring out their rotations, and we'll see what it all washes out in the end. But so far early this season, Niagara or London has given up their lead. If, if they have got up their leads, it has been in the second half, and they've been outscored, even, if they, even though they are scoring big, they've been outscored in the fourth quarter. Well, not just that, but they've allowed 30-plus points in each fourth quarter that they have played in this year in their, each of their four games. And I know that's got to frustrate a coach, especially in that Orangeville game. Did a great job to come back in that one, but, you know, make a couple more stops, and that's a much different game. Okay, London bringing up the ball. Williamson bringing the ball up for London. Kadugan, point guard on the bench. This is White. Accidentally bounces the ball off the head of Lewis. Or no, sorry, Patterson. Taking the ball to the rim and Commons draws to foul. Commons, they cannot afford to lose him in the middle if they want to stay competitive in this game. He is really their only inside defender. Well, with Stutz, as we mentioned, we believe he has the flu. And, uh, of course, Kirk Williams Jr. got in foul trouble early. You can't really afford to have Commons in foul trouble as well because that's pretty much the majority of their front court depth there. Reason taking the handoff from White. Sort of a spin-off, unable. Double <laughs> team by uh, Stutz and Ben, and he was unable to deliver that ball into the corner, and that was a turnover for London. Got caught up, jumping up in the air with nowhere to go. Okay, so Kaishan Patterson with the ball. You know he's from North Greenville. Stutz with the ball up top. Good ball fake. Puts the ball down there low for Chris Commons. Hitting double team, throwing the ball underneath. Great save by Johnson. Taking the ball at hoop is Williamson. The ball gets knocked out, no foul called. Williamson taking the ball hard to the hoop. Oh, in striking distance yet, Niagara, 10 points. Williams inbounding the ball for London. Throws the ball up top to Johnson. Back up the familiar position for Royce White, distributing the ball up top. To set up the plays, sets the early screen. And he takes it hard to the hoop. Up with his left hand, high off the backboard. Way over top of Stutz. Nice play by Kyle Johnson. Patient. Johnson now guarding Ben. Well, Ben, the ball. Nothing happened so far down the 10 seconds already in the shot clock. And Ben taking it to the hoop. And a great block by Johnson. And White turns the ball over. And he gets. And Niagara takes the ball to the hoop. That was Ben. He got hammered by Anthony Criswell that time. We saw Criswell go up for that huge block and then tried to get another after the turnover. But unfortunately, not able to get the second time. He's going to take a foul here. But London again. Doing well considering the slow pace of this game. We like 
we know that London likes to be a very fast-paced transition team, and uh, there hasn't been a ton of that in this game. They've done a good job of continuing to play within themselves uh, when that game slows down. Well, Niagara's playing tough, uh, trying to go for all the steals, looking at the passing lanes. They have disrupted London's transition offense there where they want a fast break. That's created some open looks and some foul trouble for London Lightning. Got five team fouls already here in this third quarter. So obviously a bit of a strategy change by Gras locally. Ben makes the second one. Substitution coming in. He's going to the bench. And Tyler Murray coming in for Niagara. So Williamson again bringing the ball up for London. What a luxury they have that he can be their point guard. So you're right, the game has slowed down. A lot of set plays, set offenses being shown here. Here's a shot by Chriswell. Makes the three-pointer. That'll speed things up. They keep making threes like that. And Niagara's going to have to come out and guard it. Tyshawn Patterson. The ball up top. Guarded by Friesen. Friesen's got good feet. Patterson trying to get to the hoop. A little hesitation that time. He loses control. And that's a travel. No foul. London Nowhere players, to go. The London defenders there did a good job of just standing their ground. None of them did anything wrong. They just stood there and and closed out the gap that Patterson was trying to attack there. Again, a half set. Nobody guarding him that time, so takes the early jump shot. Chriswell trying to put it back in the rim, and he out-jumped everybody and got fouled trying to put that tip in. That's going to be a big loss uh, for the Niagara River Lions. That's Chris Common's fourth foul. He's going to have to come out of the game here. And uh, again, already a shorthanded team. Having Common sit on your bench really does not help things. Junior's coming back in. Kirk Williams Jr. coming back in for Chris Common. They're not, other than Logan Stutz, he's about the only size they got out there. Well, Kirk Williams Jr. isn't exactly in a great spot foul-wise either. He's sitting at three already. And so that fourth quarter might be very difficult for the River Lions if uh, either of those guys continue to see foul trouble. Yeah, because both Amarty and Allison are hurt or not dressed for Niagara, and they're both listed at six foot nine. That's really their rotation. And uh, we haven't seen anything about Russ Conley yet either tonight. I just see, uh, look at his name on the roster. We haven't called it out, number 33. So I'm not sure what to make of that. Conley, not a guy who usually plays a ton of minutes, uh, but considering their front court situation, might want to think about throwing him in, throwing him in here. But I think right now uh, the River Lions are more focused on just trying to get back into this game before they worry about whether fouls are going to knock them out of it. Well, they've gone small and, and Stutz, so that's what I'm seeing right now. Stutz, of course, great scorer, but on a bit under the weather tonight. A bump up top by Chriswell, and that's Pat Tayshawn Patterson. Nice dish off to Kirk Williams Jr. Good pair of hands, makes it easy off the backboard. Williamson on the sideline throws it out quick. Chriswell, nice fake, little pop shot from the elbow, makes the two. This is Murray, he's trying to push the ball, get some pace on it if they possibly can. Throws it over to Kirk Williams Jr. He has a long look at open through at that wide open three. And that was Lewis fighting for the rebound. He's going to get the London foul. He's got inside position. It's the seventh team foul for a London Lightning. So Stutz going to the line. So both Lewis and Stutz are in there, and the foul's called on Stutz. So he's shooting a one and makes it. I think this is sort of a tipping point here. It's 14 points, sort of. Which way is it going to go here for Niagara? That's what I feel. That's Chriswell fighting hard for the boards. It's Joel Friesen. You know he's taking it to the hoop. Offensive board again by none other than Garrett Williamson. London has to get back in a hurry. Nagga really hadn't hustled back, so they had two guys waiting on the offensive end. London got back on transition. This is 
Murray taking the ball to the hoop, trying to dish it off to Williams Jr., but London defender able to deflect the ball out. That was Williamson. Eight seconds left in the shot clock. 16 points, grown to 16 points here, so I think this is a bit of a tipping point here. If they can't keep it within that stretch of 10 to 12 points. Williams with the turnaround, good body control. Puts the ball in the net. Again, Kirk Williams Jr., of course, very key piece to a lot of good teams. 2013-14, he was the sixth man of the year, and then after that he went to Windsor and won a title. So, I mean, Kirk Williams Jr., a very critical piece uh, to a lot of good teams here in the NBLC. Well, we're certainly hearing a lot more from him in the second half. There was a bit of foul trouble in the first, but he's coming to life. And that's a three. Josiah Moore, no hesitation. Got it down to 11, so we're hanging around, hanging around. Julian Boyd, lots of time to set his feet, and he makes it. I don't know what happened for Niagara there. Julian Boyd has been shooting 60% from three-point land this season. And I mean, if you're going to leave a guy like that completely open, he's going to bury it. Well, he had missed a few tonight, so maybe they were gambling that he wasn't going to make it, but he had all the time in the world. Even, even so, he's been smart about picking his shots. That's only his third attempt in this game. To the hoop goes Johnson. He gets hammered. Far referee calls the play and not the one underneath. But that definitely was a foul. Hard drive to the hoop by Kyle Johnson. That's the third foul on Stutz, so another of the, the uh, front court players for the Niagara River Lions in foul trouble. I'll give Niagara a lot of credit here. They are shorthanded and under the weather, as we said a number of times on the show, but they are hanging in and battling yet. Do they have enough left to get to the end of this quarter without getting blown out and make it a game in the fourth? We'll see. Johnson makes his first. And the second one. Back up to 16 points again on that play. Murray with lots of playing time here tonight. Spins around. Luke Singleton gives it to Williams Jr. Calmly puts it in. They're hanging around. Kirk Williams really playing well in this third quarter. Yeah, the majority of points have been in this uh, this third right here. He's at, sitting at 14 for the game now. Julian Boyer was sort of a step back that time. Singleton underneath held his position, couldn't hold on to the ball. Three points are such a big weapon, eh? Get two in a row, all of a sudden six points either way. It's a big difference maker. Murray nearly turns the ball over half. Risky pass up top. Julian Boyd almost thought of going for it. Williams steps back. Thought he's feeling it there, but that's Johnson with the rebound. And that was Luke Patterson hustling back to slow him down. It looked like he was going for the blindside steal there, but Johnson kept his eye on him. Trying to play for the last shot of the quarter here. Ten, just under ten seconds to go here on the shot clock. Johnson with the ball, pull up jumper. Comfortable looking shot for him. Little time for Niagara to shoot here. They got three seconds, two to go. Well defended by Garrett Williamson and Julian Boyd, no attempt. So in the end of all that, it washes out to a 15 point lead stretched out for the London Lightning. Yeah, that was a great quarter for the London Lightning. They kept uh, Niagara with only 24 points in the quarter. I think they liked the first half of that quarter better than the second half, but still, anytime you can win a quarter ever so slightly, that's gonna be a big difference for your team. Uh, Niagara really struggling based on that uh, not very good second quarter. They had, they had a lot of ground to make up in that third quarter, and they just weren't able to quite do it. London Lightning kept pace with them. We'll get some of your stats leaders. Uh, in the game right now, for the London Lightning, you've got Royce White with 16 points, 10 rebounds, uh, and he's leading the team in both categories. Uh, Julian Boyd actually leading the team in assists now with four. He's also got 11 points, six rebounds. And then Anthony Criswell, who did the majority of his damage in this quarter, is sitting at 11 points and eight rebounds, and he's the second leading scorer for the London Lightning. That's not a position you usually attribute to Anthony Criswell. He's done a great job here tonight. 
Looking at the Niagara River Lions, Kirk Williams Jr. doing most of the damage, 15 points. Uh, again, the majority coming in that quarter. Josiah Moore sitting at 11 points. We haven't seen him get a ton of rebounds, which is really his calling card coming into this game, though. And then Marcus Lewis and Bilal Ben sitting at 10 points. We haven't seen a ton of either in that third quarter. Where are Logan Stutz's stats at the moment? Because he's such a big part of it. Logan Stutz only one point in the third quarter. He's sitting at 7.6 rebounds. And, uh, well, he was sitting at 6.6 .6 rebounds yeah, before the start of the He's really half. laboring out there. He's trying his hardest, but you can see him laboring. Some of the other categories that uh, fans might be interested in. Field goal percentage, London Lightning shooting 50%. Niagara at 44 uh, Niagara surprisingly shooting 38% from three-point land. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, they're still down in this one right now. Assists about even, steals about even, turnovers about even. Uh, and, and really, if you look at the numbers, there isn't really a clear reason why Niagara might be struggling. But then you look at some of the deeper numbers, and you've got bench scoring 27-8 to for the London Lightning. And I really think that's been the story of the game is the short bench for the Niagara River Lions. And this is the part of the game where... You start to see guys get tired, and uh, statistically, that was the best quarter for the Niagara River Lions. But that's not saying much, considering they really struggled in that second. Yeah, give them credit. They're hanging around yet. It's going to be Niagara ball. Kirk Williams Jr. inboundings at half. The Lightning are coming out. So we'll start get a reset here. Uh, Murray's on the floor along with Kirk Williams Jr. Logan Stutz is out there, as along with Tyshawn Patterson, who's number 23 for you, and Ben. So three, three real good ball handlers there. Two offensive players in Stutz and Williams. The Lightning's got Johnson out there, along with Singleton. Friesen, step back shot by Tyshawn, by Josiah Moore. He makes that first one of, of the fourth quarter. So up top, got uh, Kyle Johnson doing a lot Whoa. of ball handling. This time it got turned over by Mr. Bilal Ben. Puts that up two quick baskets for Niagara to put him back within 11. Well, that was a picturesque steal there from Ben. Completely picked the pocket of London Lightning there. Singleton taking it to the hoop hard. Unable to get high enough off the rim. That was a good drive by him. Unable to finish. In the corner. For Niagara, that's Josiah Moore again, trying to do it. Got nowhere to go up with that. And Johnson, unable to pick the ball up. I think he was looking ahead before he wanted to, uh, before he picked the ball up. Ended up getting a jump ball. The hustle play of Josiah Moore. And that should be London ball on the side as Niagara had the ball first possession. Chris Commons, is that who I see coming to the score table? Might as well. They got a chance to stay in the game. That's because Royce White is coming in. So we're looking for a matchup between the two coaches. This is the marquee matchup of the night tonight, I think, between Commons and White. I find it funny. They were kind of hiding White at the far end of the London Lightning bench as he was taking his uh, track pants and all that off, trying to see if they could sneak him into the game before Niagara could answer with Commons. Uh, Royce White, again, having a great game tonight, leading the Lightning in both scoring and rebounds. White again with the ball up top. A beautiful entry pass to Boyd. Boyd is such the beneficiary of those great passes, and he's translating them into baskets. Moore again up top, this time Friesen's guarding him this time. Johnson, a little bit overmatched with Kirk Williams, I think, and White comes out to help. Leaves Common wide open, but he's unable to do anything. Driving to the hoop now, but he's got pushed before the shot, I believe, on the on the floor. Yeah, Kyle Johnson there in a mismatch. He's a little undersized up against Chris Commons. Kind of had no choice but to try and uh, stand his ground, but unfortunately committed a foul in doing so. The River Lions with the ball at the end. Over the top. That's Kirk Williams. Not sure. He called that a charge. Is that Friesen underneath there? Almost any time you see Joel Friesen hit the ground, you can almost assume it's going to yep. be a charge there. And Kirk Williams Jr. I thought it was a, it there. I thought and it was I think a we just got another foul he here. He did. He's got a technical foul because he did not agree. He thought he was already had taken off, but 
Referees call freeze and being in the right place at the right time and taking the punishment. Kirk Williams, they don't want to lose him if they want to stay in this game. He's been a good scorer for them in the third quarter. So that's definitely a technical foul on Williams. Over and above the charging foul. That's going to be five fouls on Kirk Williams Jr. Picking up two right there. Looks like they're going to leave him in because, I mean, if you're Niagara, why not? you got to get back into this game before you can worry about the foul situation. But Kirk Williams Jr. really playing with fire here. Brian Anderson, the designated foul taker for the Lightning, unable to convert. And it should be the London ball at half. Well, the game has sort of slowed down a bit from what we had in the first half. You know, it's interesting. We've been wondering how London's going to do when the ball get, when the ball game gets a little slower here, and uh, they've performed quite well. Their half-court offense has looked all right. I'm sure they'd like to put up better scoring numbers, but with the game at this pace, it's been just fine. Well, that was a great give and go between Anderson and White that time. White with the soft hands, takes it off the backboard, fouled by Chris Common. So the two key players for Niagara River Lions both picking up quick fouls. That's going to be number five on Chris Commons now. So both of the... Uh, the Windsor, uh, the former Windsor players, I guess. I thought I had a more clever word for that. <laughs> but the, <laughs> the two Windsor players in some foul trouble here. White makes a second one. It's Tyler Murray bringing the ball up for Niagara, carried by Kyle Johnson. Reach in foul, I think, that time by Johnson. He sort of ducked underneath the arm of Murray. I don't know what he's thinking of. He didn't have good position that time. That's his fourth team. That's his fourth foul. Considering Johnson hasn't played a ton of minutes, I'm surprised to see that that's his fourth. He's actually leading the Lightning in fouls now. Double team. Didn't turn out for London. Well, that was a good pressure. Turn they did turn the ball over. Big rebound underneath. That's definitely a foul underneath. Kirk Williams Jr. getting the weak side rebound, as we call it. Julian Boy with the foul. Logan Stutz coming back in the game. Coming in for the shooter for Kirk Williams Jr. Well, I mean, Logan Stutz has the least fouls amongst their big. You kind of need them in this game right now. Well, Lightning scored 80 points with still most of this quarter to go. And they are averaging 120 per game so far in the first four games of the season. I think their average for defense is around 109, I think they've allowed per game, if I remember my homework right. So right now Niagara Falls falling far short, or Niagara River Lions falling far short of that. Like we thought, Stutz in, Williams out. It's been interesting, the uh, chess match of whether or not you're going to have uh, Royce White and Chris Commons on the floor at the same time. Uh, Commons going to stay in here as White comes out, but that's really been the matchup that uh, Grosso Cole has been looking for. Soft touch by Kyle Johnson, gets into the paint, a little floater. Rolls around and in for him. Ben's played a lot tonight, throwing it out to Commons. He throws it up as well, and he makes it. That's a two, though. He was inside the three-point line. Anderson with the ball. Tyler Murray with a tough matchup with Anderson. I think that was a carry. He didn't dribble yep. while he <laughs> swung around. I Junior Cadugan coming in. Coming in for Anderson. Stutz coming up to set the high screen and rolls to the basket, but unable to get it to him. That was good to recovery there by Chriswell. Stutz going up over top of Chriswell. Chriswell holding a position, then turns the ball over, throws it at Kadugan's feet. He's unable to hold on to it. 
Did a lot of things right there, Chris Well, but in the end he threw the ball away. Looks like the refs are talking about something here. Yeah, that's definitely Niagara ball on the side. Well, he played great defensive position there on a much taller opponent did uh, Chris Well. Logan Stutz. I think he just looks taller. I'm looking at the heights. They're both <laughs> the same height, but because of his long, lanky frame, Stutz just looks taller, but he's not apparently. So that is a good matchup underneath there between Chris Well and Stutz. This is common, sort of pushing off, but doing a good job with a little floater. Hook shot in the lane. That seems to be one of his favorite shots. Yeah, I'd say Coleman's got away with one there, but still able to execute. Maybe just a bit of veteran wild to get that one in the rim. Junior Kadugan up top, throws it to Boyd. He freezes the defender, but he let the defender get too close to him, and that is Marcus Lewis stealing the ball and going full court and getting fouled by freezing, I believe, at the end. Lightning call a timeout. Looking, I think really tonight London is really trying deliberately to run their half-court offense as much as they can. Of course, they've still been doing the runouts, you know, when of course it makes sense. But at every opportunity, it looks like if they can, they're pulling the ball back out, and they're trying to run a set offense. We know they like to run a gun, and they're good at it. We know they like to shoot the threes, and they're good at it. I think tonight, based on what I see, London really focusing on what their half-court uh, offense is tonight. Yeah, and I think part of that is they were struggling defensively against transition and they don't want to get into a running match with the Niagara River Lions because the River Lions, like London, likes to play in transition on offense. So by making their offense a half court and slowing the game down, that makes it slower for Niagara as well. Niagara was really, when they were sort of making a comeback, a lot of that was coming in transition and London didn't have guys get back, didn't have uh, guys in the right spots. And now that they've made it half court, slow the game down, Niagara isn't able to run the floor the way they want to because there's usually plenty of help back for the London Lightning. And uh, it's one of those things, they make one change on one end and it ends up helping both. Yeah, I still think that, uh, you know, with an undermanned lineup, London probably could have done a lot more running tonight and maybe really wore Niagara Fall or Niagara River Lions out. out. But I think it was a deliberate attempt tonight to, knowing that the game sort of in hand, they're running a half-court offense whenever they can. And I'm sure London knows that they've got the manpower to make the Niagara River Lions run, but you, you don't you can bank on whether or not your half-court's going to slow them down. You can only hope as to whether or not they're going to get tired or not. So I think going well, to half-court is a yeah. much safer option there. Ben up top playing a lot of minutes tonight. That's Chriswell trying to keep Commons in place, and he pulled him by the hip. Uh, Commons unable to get that entry pass. Foul on Chriswell. Team's fifth, team, Tim's, team's fifth foul, sorry. It's hard to say. So Josiah Moore off, and back in is Patterson. Stutz with the ball. He had out-jumped Royce White, beat, was beating him to the floor, and then Royce recovered, we thought, or at least he thought, and stole the ball back, called the foul on Royce White, which he didn't agree with. But Stutz had him beat. So right now, it's Stutz and White against each other. Again, they throw it up high. He steps back. Ooh, that looked good from here, but then it missed the basket completely, so we would call that an air ball. Ball don't lie. Getting the razzing from the crowd on that. But. Ball don't lie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie there. On uh, Chris Commons, though, it looked like he caught an elbow from Anthony Criswell, and they're talking a bit on the other end of the floor here. Johnson getting lots of playing time tonight as well. Throws it into White. White's waiting patiently. Stutz leaning on him, but he can't hold him in place. Nearly a turnover there. Lewis nearly stole the ball. Could pass to Cadogan. You see the Lutz just leaning on White, but it's as if it's not even there. White just goes where he wants to go anyway. Well, there's no one really in the front court, even when they were fully healthy, that has the muscle mass to really deal with a guy like Royce White. Friesen with the ball up top, trying to dribble to the hoop. Bit of a ticky-tack foul, I would call that one, in our league anyway. I didn't see much there. Had him pinned down, Friesen. Marcus Lewis with the foul. 
7.40 to go here at Budweiser Gardens. 83-72, London Lightning over the Niagara River Lions. The underman and sort of tired ones we see now. That time Lutz held his position. Criswell fighting hard for the rebound. Again, he puts the ball where the defender can get it. Cadogan brings it out. Ball never hit the rim, so it's three seconds left. These guys were shooting a wild shot just because the ball never did hit the rim. Ball thrown in the quarter quickly for Patterson. And out to Commons for a long three. And he makes it. We're Chris. down to eight points, Chris. Well, Chris Commons is a veteran of this league. You know the damage he can do. You know he likes to shoot the three-pointer when he's open. You can't lose Chris Commons in a situation like that. Working hard was White getting the hoop and even working harder with Anthony Criswell. Criswell with the offensive rebound, and he gets the foul. Yeah, it's an eight-point game. The Niagara's been chipping away, chipping away, and London unable to execute their offense in this fourth quarter. So here's the pattern again, what you were talking about, London being outscored in the fourth quarter. It's 12-5 to five right now in this fourth quarter. That's really not very good for the London Lightning. Uh, especially as they kind of want to pull the monkey off their back in this fourth quarter, I would imagine. But right now, a big risk being taken by Gross Lacole. He's got Williams Jr. And, uh, and pardon me, he took... No, Commons is in the game. So, yeah, you got Williams Jr. and Commons both in the game with five fouls. And I think he's really going to just give Niagara a chance to get back in this game. Worry about the fouls later. I like this move. It's a bit of a risk. But, I mean, you got to get into the game somehow, and these are the guys who will do it for you. Ben with the ball up top. So Logan Stutz is sitting on the bench again. Throwing it underneath. And that's a bit of a collision underneath there. That was Garrett Williamson diving for the ball on the floor and sort of ran into the knee of Marcus Lewis. He's sort of limping off to the side there. Those knees on knee on knees in basketball really hurt. There's nothing protecting you there. Common steps back again for the big oh. three, but he was looking down at his feet, make sure he didn't step out of bounds first. Unable to convert was Chriswell. He had the wide open shot, had a great ball fake, was unable to convert. This is Patterson going as fast as he can. Good hustle back by Chriswell. That time to deflect that interior pass. You see again, though, Niagara is so easily to, easy to penetrate the London defense there once they get in transition. You know that's why London wants to slow it down, and you know that's what... London doesn't want to see Niagara being able to pull. Substitution in for Chriswell. I think he's just winded, I think. He's been getting a round of applause from the crowd for his hustle tonight. It's also his fourth foul in the game, so I think uh, Coach Julius wants to make sure he's got Chriswell for his toughness later in the quarter. Ben with the ball with a screen from Common. Commons. Again, he goes up, sort of tentatively, hopefully, was hoping that was going in, but See how quickly White got rid of that pass as soon as the double team came in. This is freezing up top. Johnson, Boyd posting up underneath with Kirk Williams. I think he has a bit of an advantage there. Here's Garrett Williams, and he definitely has an advantage. Soft hands off the backboard. Great recognition from the London Lightning to notice Williamson had that mismatch. Great job by Williamson calling for it and attacking Patterson. Yes, I really like uh, Garrett Williams' game. So we know he can be a primary scorer for anybody in this league. But he's willing to do whatever it takes for the team. There. Gets a beneficiary of a pass from Royce White. Basically waits his turn off the backboard. You know, there isn't really a way to track the stat in NBL Canada, but I'd love to see who has the most fourth quarter points in the NBLC. Because as much as London has struggled, Williamson's been their guy to get a lot of those clutch end-of-game buckets. Niagara swinging the ball. That's a long three-point attempt. In and out of the rim. Offensive board by none other than Mr. Commons. Again, Commons having a very good end of this game, playing very disciplined considering the foul situation, too. Again, Royce White with the ball up top. Dragging traffic. Setting plays up here. A wide open three for Friesen. He makes it with a <laughs> soft roll. That ball was in there. Absolutely it was. Got the soft roll. Didn't look like it was going to go in, but nobody checking him at the three-point line. Well, Joel Friesen, he hasn't scored since the first quarter, and that three there, a big one for the University of, uh, of Alberta graduate. Well, just under five minutes to play in this fourth quarter. 
Now it's 92-77 to back up the 15 points. It was down to eight. Nagger got one more push. I thought he just fell. I think he got a bit of a shove from Johnson and just enough to throw him off balance. And that's the, they're already in the team shooting bonus already for the River Lions. I believe that's five on Johnson with that one. It's over the limit for London. Yeah, it's five on Johnson, you're right. So Tyler Murley at the line. Makes his first. Steps up the line for his second. White to Johnson to Williamson, trying to sell the play down. As you can see, waited patiently for his players around the floor to avoid the double team. Goes hard to the hoop and gets the call. Does Garrett Williamson? He was pushing at that time. He saw the opening. You're right, he's a, he is a big contributor when he needs to be in the fourth quarter. He's not afraid to take those shots. We saw back in the 2013-14 season, he led the London Lightning in scoring, was one of the top scorers in NBL Canada. And uh, he came back last year uh, after a year in Greece, and he started the year injured. He didn't really get into a groove until much later in the year, and uh, he's going to miss that free throw. But one of his calling cards is, of course, getting to the free throw line a lot. But he's a guy who doesn't necessarily need the offense to run through him to get his points. And that makes him more valuable because he's able to put points on the board. He's able to work within the offense and just find his moments throughout the game as opposed to being a high volume guy. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. Tyler Murray trying to stay in bounds. He does. Tiptoes on the line there. This is Commons He's trying to put the ball on the floor and beat White. And White just steals it away from him. It's Joel Friesen with the ball. Again, they're slowing it down a bit deliberately here. Going all the way to the corner. White patiently swings it around to Johnson. Johnson looking for a great catch there by Boyd. That was a hard pass out there. And Williamson again. Beautiful little fingertip roll right at the rim. And so, paying a lot of attention to White and Boyd, that leaves Williamson open, and he's taking full advantage of it. Well, we talked about how the River Lions were very much outscoring the Lightning uh, in that uh, in this fourth quarter so far, but the London Lightning have gone on, uh, I believe that's going to be a 7-1 to one run when all things are done. The live stats take a bit to update. I apologize, folks. But the London Lightning on a heck of a run, and a lot of it being done by Garrett Williamson. He's been their closer in this fourth quarter. He's come in. He didn't play a ton in the third quarter. He's been mostly doing his damage here in the fourth quarter. And now, after after a bit of a quiet third, he's got 17 points in this game. That's going to tie him for Royce White for leading scorer of the London Lightning. And I, I think it's not just how many points he's had, but how he's gotten them and when he's gotten them. That has been absolutely crucial uh, for the London Lightning to continue to hold on and hold off the Niagara River Lions. Well, it's also interesting to see who are the players at the, on the floor in the last five to seven minutes of the game. And we're looking here, you know, we know that uh, White was on the floor, Royce White, Joel Friesen, great defender, Kyle Johnson, good ball handler, Garrett Williamson, clutch player, right? Those are the players that are on the floor here at the end. And of course, Julian Boyd is a power forward. Well, 95-79, just under four minutes to go here at Budweiser Gardens. I think some more people that came in uh, must have been during the first quarter or so. This looks a little more full and noisier than it was at the beginning of the game. Yeah, yeah, based on uh, what I've seen from this building, I'd say it's about 2,000 plus in here. 2,000 still. You're thinking that many, eh? Well, it's one of those things. You, you see the upper bowl closed, and you think there aren't going to be that many, but yeah. I've seen uh, more sparse crowds get a have a higher attendance number than you would think, and I think this is one of those ones that's sneaky large, I'll say. Because, well, I mean, you've got the court side completely full. Yes, we do. That's true. So Murray still on the court, playing lots of minutes tonight, taking hard to the hoop, dishes off to Logan Stutz. He takes it slowly to the hoop. Nice, easy, but unable to convert. That was Boyd getting accidentally poked in the eye, I think. Williamson basically with the ball up top again. I think that was just a tired defense that time by number 12, Marcus Lewis. Unable to move his feet in time. 
Criswell coming in. Was coming in for Boyd. Yes, Boyd got a finger in the eye. He's still rubbing it. Chriswell coming in for him. So London also now shooting in the bonus. Williamson again to the line. Well, this is getting opened up to what do we got? 17 point lead. It's going to be tough to come back the last three and a half minutes. See how this plays out. Stutz is on the floor along with Commons, I see, and Lewis and Murray and Tyshawn Patterson for Niagara. Patterson up top of the ball, trying to beat his man off the dribble. He did. He did beat Joel Friesen. Friesen banged his knee uh, in the first half, and he was stretching at halftime. You can see him grimacing walking up the floor right now, Joel Friesen. He was unable to move laterally that time on Tyshawn. Patterson, hopefully that's not anything serious. Friesen with the ball up top right now. Royce White up, Logan backs off on him, giving him the shot. This is Johnson with a bit of a push off, but puts it up, gets it in time for beat the shot clock. Rebound by Niagara. Murray with the ball up top. Nobody to pass to at the moment. Into the corner for a nice spin around move. By Lewis. I think they're deciding oh, sorry, if Chris Patterson, Will, sorry, yeah. I think they're deciding if Chris Wall was out of bounds or not before he threw it uh, off of Logan Stutz's shin. The refs conferring over there. It's going to be Niagara Ball. So London's still got White on the floor at the end of this game. Along with Chriswell, Johnson, Garrett Williamson, and Joel Friesen. Don't expect White to be out there if this does get into free throws, however. Uh, White only shooting a slightly above 50%. So I believe Coach Julius was trying to keep him out there as long as he can and, and keep providing that big body on the interior uh, until, of course, this get, even if the River Lions do want to foul, but if this does happen to get to foul territory. That's Lewis trying to be his man off drill, trying to back down Chriswell, which is a tough, tough task. I think a few too many bumps by Chriswell that time, but he was trying to hold his ground. I think he's a difficult man to back down. It's going to be five on Chriswell there. How many team fouls are we up to now? 27 and 23? Yeah, that's 27 for the London Lightning, 23 for the Niagara River Lions. First foul shot's good for Marcus Lewis. So that'll put uh, London at three and two in league play if this uh, holds up, which we think it will. And Niagara Falls will go to two and three. Next game up is Saturday night for the London Lightning. There's White down below, Calm is still on, looking for the flash from who else but Garrett Williamson coming from the blind side. Great timing by White, just waiting for the defender to turn his head before he makes a lovely pass. This time Williamson steals the ball, going to Johnson. Bounce pass for Williamson again, the beneficiary again of his teammate. Good hustle, got fouled in the end. Niagara Falls, I think, running out of gas. Or Niagara, River Lions. I'll learn that yet. No falls in this team's name. Niagara. Playing out of St. Catherine, correct? Correct. Yes. Yeah, beautiful arena Lions. down there, too. Is that right? I have not been down there yet. Yeah, the Meridian Center. It's a brand new building. And uh, very, very, very nice facilities they have there. And uh, you got to give credit to the River Lions. They've done a really good job uh, getting into that arena, and they've done a really good job with that team in the St. Catharines area. What the kind of turnout are they getting for their games? I don't know this year off the top of my head, but in year one, I know they met their attendance goal, so uh, that's a pretty big deal because a lot of expansion teams in NBL have struggled right away. Yes, yes, we've seen that over the years, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, cost a few franchises their, uh, their locations, right? So. so London going to the line. Uh, turnover by Niagara. 
That will be Chriswell going to the foul line. London over the 100 points again. The line's down to 81 tonight. Missing a few of their big guns, big shooters. You know, I think Coach Julius, of course, there were concerns with the defense after that Orangeville game. Uh, this would be the best defensive performance of the London Lightning this year uh, if all things hold steady. So uh, I think Coach Julius very happy with what his team has done on the defensive end in this game. I'll give Niagara credit. They've been battling all game long. And the uh, stayed in it up till about four or five minutes ago. They've been really into this game. It was, I think at the five minute mark, it was around eight points. So. I think they've done a good job of, until recently, they never really went away despite the fact that they were shorthanded and had some key players in foul trouble. So uh, really, the River Lions, I know 20 points looks bad here, but it was never really that bad for the rest of the game prior to this. And I, I think they did as good a job as can be expected considering how underhanded they were and uh, how how many fouls happened to guys like Commons and Williams Jr. who yeah, they really need yeah, to step up. That fifth foul uh, with Kirk Williams Jr. I think really took him out of the game. Oh, I yeah. think. We haven't heard from him really since then. So. I haven't seen uh, Troy Gottselig tonight. I wonder if he's hurt. Just uh, doesn't look like he's sitting on the bench, but he has not get any playing time tonight. He's the only one that I see on the lineup on the London lineup that didn't uh, see the floor tonight. We know we've seen him in the past games, so I'm thinking there might be something going on there as well, but not just speculation. So. Also might be a case of they didn't really see the matchup fit there. I know Godslick, not a guy they, they feel they need to give a ton of minutes to. Uh, so I think he's just getting a rest here because London wanted to put out their best lineup all game long. And again, it's two quarters that really killed Niagara here. They performed well enough in the first, and they haven't been terrible here in the fourth quarter. Or, pardon me, they were pretty good in the third quarter. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, that second quarter and this quarter here really putting them out of the game. Well, they were. They did have a 12 to 5 points lead in the early in this fourth quarter, and it's been all London since that time. Thrown in the far corner for Ben, back on the floor again. Guarded by the big guy, Royce. Throwing in a far over top defense. Nice soft hands. Great pass by Murray. One touch to Logan Stutz, who puts it in. Gary Williamson, steadying player, like we said, for London Lightning, setting up. This is one of Royce White's favorite positions, right at the top of the three-point line. What a beautiful pass, and a great left hand by Chriswell. Again, a big man who can pass like that is something we've never really seen in this league, and Royce White, just a very special player here in the NBLC. Stutz getting the ball, a little bit of a shoulder fake, unable to convert. You can see he doesn't really have his legs under him tonight. Williamson, last couple possessions here for the London Lightning. White. Taken to the hoop, a little dump pass again for Chriswell. <laughs> Beneficiary again is Chriswell of Royce White. Bit of a drill penetration and pass. You know, it's almost a guarantee whoever's in that front court with Royce White's going to pick up points yeah, because of that yeah, pass. Exactly, Julian Boyd or you got this time Chriswell, the beneficiary of Royce White. Absolutely. White again with the ball. Throws it over to Friesen into the corner to Williamson. Just pulls it back out. 22 seconds on the Time clock, 15 seconds left on the shot clock. You know, give, give Royce the ball here, get him two assists, and he's got a triple-double tonight. He's had a heck of a game for the London Lightning. Pardon me, he's one assist away from the triple-double. Ball stolen off of Garrett Williamson. White just lets him go by. Let's Marcus Lewis have the dunk, and that is going to be the end of the ball game on this pass. It's 105-85. Good for the Niagara River Lions, hanging in there till the very end. And it looks like London starting to get their defense back in where they want it to be. On behalf of John Van Hollingen and Chris Croucher, thank you for listening to our game here from Budweiser Gardens in London, Ontario. Final score, London Lightning 105, Niagara River Lions 85. And we'll send it over to Aaron Justin for the post-game wrap-up.
as the London Lightning Dance Pack finish their final number tonight. The big number question is the London Lightning won it by 20, 105-85 over the Niagara River Lions, and we welcome you to the Knoxville postgame courtside. Aaron and Justin, and Justin, I believe the London Lightning, they worried us a little bit because sloppy, sloppy offensively, it didn't seem like they were in focus. Yes, it was a very sloppy beginning of this fourth quarter, big time for both teams, actually. It was a little bit worried because River Lions were starting to claw their way back, got the lead down to eight, but London kept their composure, made shots, and ended up getting the W by sealing it down the stretch, that's for sure. Let's let's review the stat line for a quick second because I know there was like a major plethora of changes for Niagara, even coming out of halftime, trailing by 23. They lost it by 20 for sure, but who stood out from Niagara the most to keep them running? To keep them running, Chris Commons was definitely the best shooter out of everyone, that's for sure. 18 points, 8 of 12 shooting with 5 rebounds. Also helping them keeping going was players like Marcus Lewis, 14 points, 3 assists, 2 rebounds, as well as 2 three-pointers tonight. So they tried to keep things going, but it just wasn't enough, in my opinion, tonight the down sur the stretch. The surge of the River Lions was one thing, but like you mentioned, it's too little, too late. Too, much, too big of a lead to cover that. The... Player of the game for the London Lightning, well, leading in points, of course, Garrett Williamson, 22 points. But I was quite surprised of how they quickly used Royce White, and they used him to a great advantage that really knocked to Niagara's disadvantage. Yeah, Royce White actually almost finished with a triple-double. That's how effective he was tonight, with 17 points, 13 rebounds, 9 assists. Hmm. So he was very effective tonight, and he also helped on that defensive end to keep the River Lions in bay. He overall, so it was a good night for him, that's for sure. You want to know how effective the Lightning were in shooting tonight? They shot 51% from the field, and for sure with this 105 points they scored here tonight, that's really going to boost up their scoring average for this season. They're still first, but it appears to me that they're going to be an averaging at least about I would say 117 right after tonight because it's a big drop from 129 that they got Sunday night here. Yeah, they are having lately to start off the season blazing the net in most of their games. So the question is, can they keep it going? Right now, it's still the beginning of the season. And, the, and of course, as you go on, the energy is going to go down. The teams are going to be more prepared. And the scoring is probably going to go down. And it's going to become more defensive in closer games. Right now... You can't be like the Golden State Warriors and try and blaze the net every single night and try and outscore people mm -hmm. or something. That's for sure. Or well, Houston. Well, that's true. The season series now looks to Lightning's advantage. They're up 2-1, and they go to 3-2 in the season. Niagara goes to 2-3 and three overall. Out of the Forest City for a minute, back to the out-of-town scores. And, you know, if the River Lions scored one more point, I think we would have a first in NBLC history where the losing team scored at least 86 points. That wasn't the case. The Hurricanes beat the Highlanders 103 to 86 and for the Moncton Miracles St. John Riptide game the Riptide took it away 92 to 86 and Anthony Anderson was the player of the game for that 22 points and about five rebounds as well yeah he had a good performance tonight that's for sure with St. John helping them propel themselves to the victory then you have Tri Jambidi also doing well with I believe it was 16 rebounds as well as 21 points tonight. So that it was a monster scoreline, that's for sure, a from double, the Moncton side. A double-double for Tydren Beatty. Good on him. Really motivating the Moncton Miracles. We look at the forward schedule, and both of these clubs will play once again Saturday, but not against each other. Niagara is going east to the Harbor Station, play against the Riptide, and it's going to be a dynamic day game. One of the first interdivisional games we have in the season so far, but of, of course it's going to be a major clash. Yes, it's going to be a major clash, that's for sure, to see how they play against the opposing division and how they match up, because right now that is going to be the key to see how they go on this road trip. It's going to be back-to-back -back games out in the Atlantic Division as well for Niagara, so we'll have to see how they do, that's for sure, or, and see if they can at least get... 500 after the road trip. Absolutely, and the Riptide are three and one too. So Niagara shouldn't get discouraged at that. Anything can go in St. John, News Brunswick, and we're back right here at Bud Garden Saturday night, where for the first time 
right, well, at home, basically. The London Lightning will play the Kitchener-Waterloo Titans the first of three games in a row against the against this team. They'll play at home here, and then a few days later, they will go to the Odd in Kitchener, and then back here again. So it's a big three-game series, considering what big of an arsenal the Titans have. Yes, the Titans have a great arsenal this season. And of veterans and newer players, you have Adam Blazik, you have the Sutherland brothers. They are overall looking good to store off their their inaugural season. Mm -hmm. We'll have to see how they do in the next three games. Uh, as funny as, as scheduling that is. Well, that too. Yeah. If that's the case, we'll see you Saturday. But yes. Gardens. Yes, sir. And see you folks once again Saturday night. Nockstrom pregame will start 10 minutes before, around 6:50 Eastern Daylight Time. But from here, that will do it. 105-85, the London Lightning win once again against the Niagara River Lions. We'll see you again Saturday night. This has been a presentation of Nockstrom Digital Media, producing the media excellence in Southern Ontario. Till next time, for JP, this be Aaron Sanders saying so long from the Forest City.